sometimes the uh, oh yeah sweet bam we're live that's dope yeah if the quality on the screen is a little fuzzy sometimes the vindicate one doesn't work but both of them should, should that work. one's cool because it says ceo and oh yeah that one i couldn't oh yeah uh well done your qr code is scannable click done button huh My i couldn't get the um i can't get that can you guys get that vindicate one in the lower right hand corner to work i can't get that one to work Mm, yeah, I got podcast. the same thing you did. The information, well done. Pod your QR code is scannable. Podcast apparel. It would be cool. Can you tell it to make the dots in the shape of something? Like, could you make that into a cock and balls? Or I was hoping to, and I couldn't or find a naked girl or something. I couldn't find anything on camera that would allow me to do that. It's got the little logo in the center, but not exactly what we're looking for. Hey, what is um um? Oh shit! I fucked up Rumble this morning. What's cerebral palsy? Am I saying that right? Cerebral palsy. I used to take care of a guy who had cerebral palsy. I used to know all about that shit. I used to have to bathe this dude. I don't know. <laughs> what is that? Um, about it to speak. And I remember uh, Haley made a CrossFit video on some chick who had cerebral palsy and had to wear a helmet everywhere, and then she started doing CrossFit, and it gave her like the dexterity, strength, and balance to. Not needed. CP is the most common motor disability in children. Motors, this thing, just operating your shit. Mm -hmm. uh, cerebral palsy means having to do with the brain. Palsy means weakness or problems with the muscles. Uh, cere cere or I'm not even saying it right. Cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy. Is caused by abnormal brain development or damage to the developing brain that affects a person's ability to control his or her muscles. I really want to get um I want to I want to get uh that chick on that um JR Howells. Oh yeah. Coaching. What was her name again? Nicole? I saw I wrote her name down here on my notes. Yeah, I can't I can't remember. But it sounds like JR is going to uh get her number. Yeah, and get us in touch with her. I know we have like four athletes a day every day until the games, but I, we should try to get her in. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. especially if she's going to win. Definitely. Anyway. Because we like winners. Um, Wad Zombie, don't let the logo block your gorgeous face, Souza. Fair yeah, enough. roger that. Oh, wait, he was talking to me. I thought he was talking about your gorgeous face. Uh, Wad Zombie, I, uh, oh, I still didn't open your text. I saw a text come in from you yesterday saying you were in town, but then I didn't open it. Oh, Will you yeah. text me again? And if you're here, well, yeah, we should definitely hang out. The fuck is that? I can't tell if you come in by your name or I can't find it. I've literally lost control of my text messages like I've lost control of my um DMs. How are you doing? <laughs> your text must be worse than mine. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to stand oh, up as much as I can. There he is. Okay. Oh, so you've been here since yesterday. Yeah, we should get coffee or something. Oh, look, there he is, Mikkel. Ah, yes. Uh -oh. How would you pronounce that? Mikkel or Michael? Mikkel. Mikkel. You like that? Waslovsky, yeah. Mikkel. Mikkel. Mikkel, the sweetbread is ready. Come inside. Why is this device not connected? What's happening here? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm bringing, uh, I'll be shooting with, a, I think, a 20. I'll bring a 20 and a 24 mil for the behind the scenes, like the interviews. Uh, a 1.8 and a 1.4 and I will bring a 70 to 200 for um, B-roll to, to capture B-roll I mean I'll shoot B-roll with the 24 wide establishing shit but a 70 to 200 I'll have two little cameras on me oh, with my leather straps what's going on oh, I think he's having some issues let's see yeah, something went wrong. Uh, give me two. Uh, you're backstage only. Uh, uh, oh, I sent seeing, that picture. Yeah, you seen the text? Yeah. Um, we to. saw you for one minute, then you vanished. We have Jake Douglas on after this. Yeah. Isn't it weird that who who's the lady we had on yesterday? Emily DeRoy. Yeah. Isn't it weird that her 
connection in a hotel room in the United States of America is worse than Bronislawski sitting in a car in Poland. Yeah, it's a, it's a crapshoot, right? <laughs> or like Abigail, who's just in her house, who's done several podcasts and it didn't seem to work. Yeah. But Ron could be in his car in Poland. <laughs> crystal, crystal clear, four, streaming 4K. Hello, Beautiful. I'm Bronislaw. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually an undercover agent for the Polish army. That's why my uh, internet is lightning quick. Yeah, total toss up. I think a lot of these people are getting into Madison now. When do I get to see you guys? Um, I land Monday. I, I seriously think this is what's going to happen to me. I'm going to land Monday. I'm going to go to Hiller's house. He's going to talk me into doing a workout. I'm not going to want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because he's going to like give me some pre-workout or something. Some swolverine. And then I'm going to go over to JR's in house. I'll be there by five or six. I think I'll work out with Taylor again. <laughs> then I'll go to my hotel room and I'll never come out unless it's to um, go for a walk because I'm like an old man. I'm, I'm a chronic walker. I have a walking problem. And then um, I'll only leave the house to work. And then that's it. The The hotel room. God, I hope I have a decent hotel room. You're getting in with that much time on Monday? Two workouts? I I just I it just I just kind of want to check off the box. Mm. You know what I mean? Go see Sil Hiller's house, uh, make Taylor happy, get a workout in with him. He's like he's like in a frenzy that we're gonna hang out. I just feel like I should check the box. Everybody's excited to see you. I think it's things like that. I saw a comment on YouTube yesterday that said that I'm a world class arrogant douche, and I was like, <laughs> I. I <laughs> <laughs> I was like sitting with it for a second. I, I don't know about the douche part. <laughs> Could you be arrogant and cool? All I heard was world class. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> you know, fill in the blank. Out. I'm thinking to myself, do you have to be a, if you're, if you're, could you just be, oh, he's an arrogant, nice guy or never? It's just yeah. arrogant, and then douche is just ha is just trails along. Like yeah. it's just that. Yep, that sucks. <laughs> it doesn't seem to go with something positive at the at the back end of that. I'll tell you. Oh my god, he's so generous and giving and thoughtful. Arrogant man. He's like just fuck. It's so cool. There, uh, there we go. There we go. Boom. You can't uh, stop Michael. You can't uh, stop him. Hi. Sorry for for the uh, travels. Ah, not a problem at all. Are you hearing me? Ah, uh, we are hearing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Hey, uh, is it Mikhail or Michael? Yeah, you know, in Polish, in Polish, Michael, but uh, I think that the easiest version is Michael. But on the during semifinals, uh, she said, Michelle. <laughs> ah, definitely not Michelle. Michelle hey. Wisolowski. <laughs> hey, so so the C is silent in Poland. I would say Michel. Michel. Yes, Michel. Michel, but Michael is okay, you know. Okay. It's the pen I like Michel. for the for I, the place on the world. <laughs> okay, but I like Michel. And then Michel, uh, uh pronounce your last name. Uh, Wisolowski, you know, in Polish, Wesolowski, in English, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe Wisolowski is okay because you you don't know a Polish word like we and the other words. Um, uh, Wisolowski, so the W is pronounced with a V, Wisolowski. Wisolowski, yes. V. Mihal Wisolowski. Wisolowski, yes, yeah. exactly. I feel like um, you're in a music video and that there's a really beautiful woman right next to you. Um, part of your <laughs> yes, on, you know, entourage. There she is. There son. she is. <laughs> <laughs> she will, she will help, help me sometimes, the, for example, when I will not understand your question or uh, I will have problem with uh, find a word. You know, we are either I'll do it because uh, I can speak, 
she is perfect and listen and sometimes <laughs> <laughs> she is listening i i speak and we are perfect uh, perfect together you know <laughs> that sounds like the perfect woman one that listens good i'm in big yes. trouble for that i'm in big <laughs> trouble for that i'm in big trouble she is, she is yes but she's perfect in everything me not <laughs> hey Mihel, how big is that baby that baby looks huge how big is that baby is that a giant baby yes <laughs> yes a giant baby he has yes. five months. The most anabolic baby in the world. <laughs> he has oh, five uh, years on the on the uh, uh, on the on the gym. It's my second son. He has three and half. So I have two sons. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's my it's my the biggest success. No CrossFit okay. games in this year. <laughs> yeah. I, I have second son. Uh, Mahel, um, that is a nice thing to say. Your two sons are your biggest success. Uh, and that's, God, that, that, I like that. That warms my heart. It should be that way. And there's nothing better than a healthy baby, right? A healthy baby is like everything. Yes. Yes, it's true. It's true, but you don't know about it uh, when you don't have any, any child. Man. Right. Hey, w when do you come to Madison? He, uh, I think he froze. Mihel? I can't hear you. You froze. Can you hear me? I am. Mm. We were doing good there for a second. I can see you. I can't hear you. Hello. Ah, oh, better. When do you come to Madison? <laughs> me, me, me. Uh, when do you? Maybe, maybe problem is with the connect. But I, you know, uh. I can go inside to my gym and I have a Wi-Fi there. Do you want to try that? I can try. Okay, wait. Give me a 15 seconds. Okay, no problem. Matt Burns, uh, he's from uh, Poland. He is in Poland. Oh, what a nice gym. Okay, now is the the prettiest place in my gym, look. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, pole dancing studio. Yes, exactly. Kasia, Super. Okay. And now I have... Um, now I have a Wi-Fi. Maybe for you it's better now. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Are you are you are you are you sitting in the pole dancing class? Yes. yes. Wow. My woman's pole dancing instructor. Who who owns that gym? Do you, do you own that gym or do you just train there? <laughs> uh, we are together. Owners. Yes, we are together, owners. Oh, so you own it with the pole dancing lady? Uh, yes. Wow, she's, that's cool. She is on the pole dance. I am on the on the CrossFit gym. In, in what city in Poland are you in? You know, it's good deal because we have uh, the same entry to, to to my gym and to the pole dance studio. <laughs> oh. Do, do the do the uh, do the people mingle? Do they date? <laughs> mingle. M mingle. Can mingle. You, can do they? Do? Do the CrossFit um, uh, people date the pole dancing people? <laughs> Sometimes, yes. Yes, because uh, a lot of um, a lot of uh, women who who train uh, pole dance need a lot of strength, a lot of strength, a lot of uh, mobility, mm. and uh, CrossFit is good for it. What city are you in, Mihel? Sorry. What what part of Poland are you in? The east, the west? What part of Poland are you? Sorry, in? it's the it's the 
east. You know, I have I have 100 kilometers to Russia now. <laughs> oh no shit. <laughs> um, is, are you are you say is it safe there? Yes, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. You know, I have uh, I have a small small uh, pretty city with a lot of yes. Look, elk, elk. Yes, and north and east. I have a lot of lakes, a lot of forests. You know, it's a beautiful area, Poland. Yes, but you have to you have to enter uh, elk, elk like e like. Uh, oh, I see it! I see it! And then I see it! I see it! Yes. Okay. Wow. So you're on the opposite side of the country from Bronislaw. Bronislaw's on the other side. Yes. No, no, no. I have 150 kilometers to his city. Oh, that's it. He is he is from Olsztyn, you know? Olsztyn is in the same state in Poland. Okay. I have I have less than 2 hours for him. Um uh, Mihail, how, how did uh how did your paths cross with um, CrossFit? What, what, what is the, how did, what brought you to CrossFit or CrossFit into your life? Um, it's a hard question. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe I, I uh, just wish for two cards. Find it. I searched, um, I searched a type, type of sport who give me uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of um, a lot of disciplines like running, like swimming, like weightlifting. And the first time I saw CrossFit in 2014, but it, uh, you know, like probably everybody, it was uh, CrossFit uh, in, in USA, uh, probably Froning and the rest of the athletes. And I saw, wow. It's a di different sport like I saw before. So maybe I will try it. Why not? I, you know, I, uh, um, I was fascinated uh, in a uh, mix of, for example, gymnastic, for example, uh, weightlifting. I was very, um, I was very impressed in muscle ups. And I, and I said to me, I will do it. I will do it and I will be on the games in the future. <laughs> from from the beginning that was your goal. From the beginning? Oh, it's <laughs> My goal was first goal. I I would like to do muscle up. Next, I would like to go on the handstand walk. I will I would like to make a 100 in snatch and the and the goal Next to next next to what the games I, you know yeah it's 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 joke I I you know I didn't uh, say before I will be on the games it was it was the biggest dream on the start I I know that CrossFit is my is my way it's my way to my in my life but the the biggest goal I think that. Uh, I saw him daring my way, you know, because I didn't have before a goal on CrossFit Games. It's fun. Family. Yes. So, so that's interesting. So, family and uh, CrossFit. You're saying those those two goals have come together, but family is your biggest goal. Is that what you're saying? Mm, yes, I think it's very important for me. For the start, you know, uh, support for my Isabella, for my friend, and everything was right. We have we have red alert. Yes. Me, me, me help. Um, where where did when you started wait, wait, CrossFit? Wait, wait, wait. Give, me, give me five seconds. Okay. Okay. No. Uh, when you started CrossFit, where were you doing it? Uh, when I started CrossFit, could you repeat? Could you repeat last word? Um, where were you doing it when you started CrossFit? Where did you Where did you train?
Did you train at a CrossFit gym or at a regular okay, gym? Sorry. Yes, I, I, you know, I am, I am very lucky, man, because I had my gym. I started uh, like a trainer, personal trainer, and I had a gym with my, with my friend. And I had uh, bars, I had uh, kettlebells, I had uh, dumbbells, and I had possible, possibly to, possibly to, possibility uh, train in my gym. So I started in my gym. We don't have any any other gyms um, like me, like my in uh, in my city because uh, other gyms are only for barbells, for kettlebells, and typical uh, gyms uh, like uh, you know uh, bodybuilding. Only my gym in my city is uh, is typical for CrossFit, and only only me, Casper, and other people f from my gym train CrossFit in my city. So, so I started you, in my gym. So you owned a gym before you owned a gym before you started CrossFit. You were the owner of a gym. Yes, I have my gym for 2016. You know, uh, I had you know. Uh, wait, give me one second. I had uh, wait, wait, wait. It was uh, I find a word. Uh, you know, I had a company with my friend. Uh -huh. We have gym together. Okay, so so I had a possibility to possibility to uh, train in my private gym. I am lucky. Um, how how old are you? How old are you? I am thirty now. Okay, so you had your own gym when you were 20, 22 years old. I am thirty. Got hit by incoming nuke. Listen, you guys in the comments, everyone chill. I'm chill. This is fine. Everyone be cool. Everything's good. I'm comfortable. I haven't gotten all uncomfortable and weird yet. It's chill. I, but we did lose him, right? He's frozen, solid. I, but when I, I can see Susan. Oh, okay, shit. Now? Oh, we got the spin. Yeah, perfect. This is okay, excellent. Okay, I will yep. show my my second son. Oh, good. Yeah, I love a second son. There he is. Yeah, what's up, boy? He is uh, he is all the time on the podium with me. You know, he has only medal on his neck. You're you're a proud dad. I love it. <laughs> yes, and you know now I have my. I have my uh, tashi 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 brick, and I have a uh, pokash ah. and I have on my on my back. I will show you la later. Eat, train, family first. <laughs> ah. Hey, when do you come to the states? I will go uh, in this Wednesday. Okay, so that's soon. That's uh, today's money. So in two days you'll come. Yes, exactly. I will and have will at 2 p.m. probably flight 2 p.m. Yes, 2 p.m. 25. So it's okay. Will you come with the whole family? No, I will not go with my family. It was it was hard decision, you know, because uh, less than one month ago we were in Malta, and there were uh, similar like in medicine, for example. Uh, 35 degrees and a lot of suns and really hard temperatures. So, uh, for example, my my uh, little son has uh, had sorry, sorry had problem with uh, with his temperature, his fiber, and my uh, in, uh, and my wife said I wouldn't like to go to the medicine because there is uh, hotter hotter than in Malta and. Uh, I wouldn't like to have a problem, for example, like I need a doctor, I need to go to the hospital because he needs help. And finally, she said, I will go in next year. <laughs> nice. <laughs> With you. So I, hey. now I have a big challenge because I can't do uh, last games now. You know, I, 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 I have to be next year. Guys, 
it's it's sure uh, um are you getting are you the fittest you've ever been in your whole life uh could you repeat are you the are you the fittest you've ever been your entire life is this the fittest mahel ever Hmm. Fitness? Sorry, I I, I, uh, I fittest. Are, are are you fittest? are you the strongest? Yeah, are you the strongest okay. you've ever been? Fittest. Okay, yeah. fittest. Yes, fittest. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yes. Now, yes, I I am now, like you said, I I have the best time in my life. I think that now I have the best performance. The maybe not strong because. A strong is not on it, 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 it's not everything but i think my performance now is the best and for for me the most important is now my experience and my and my um, uh, my you, you know it's uh, clever in crossfit uh, is uh, um, for example make a good decision on the arena is a strategy so now i feel like the best athlete in my life, in my life. <laughs> yeah, good. Hey, uh, um, I want to talk to you about the dark place. The okay. the place where where it hurts really bad. There's a video of you uh, after a workout. I don't know if you can oh. see this, but it's so bad <laughs> you can't even take your vest off. Um, oh my god, it was terrible. You know, uh, I can I can tell you about my about my the worst experience in my life in workout you know mieszko przeszkadzasz you know uh, one time i ran 10 kilometers in 40 minutes you know it was uh, it was my the worst experience in in sport in, the, in, in my life because i, I had uh, you know, I, I work with uh, my watch and I work with my, um, you know, I don't know this word, but heart rate. It's, uh, for heart, heart rate, yes, exactly. And I had uh, 37 minutes in red zone during this run. After this run, I, I, I uh, felt like um, I had problem with stay in my legs for 15 minutes so it was very similar like on the video but on the video i i wake i woke up at for five minutes and everything was okay <laughs> and, and did, did you throw up did you, did you vomit <laughs> no 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 never you know never in crossfit at uh, one time I had a very, very close situation, but finally, no. I had, sometimes I had problem with my stomach, but I uh, I will go to the, uh, to the toilet and I don't have problem with throw up. Yeah, crazy. How about, did you ever crazy. pee your pants? Sorry? Did you ever pee your pants? Mm. You know, yes, one time, but uh, a little bit, only really little bit. You know, it was on the yeah. video. Uh, you you saw it on the on the uh, the fitness manager's t-shirt, and I had a brown uh, brown shorts. Yeah, and it was during second rope climbs in seconds yeah. in second sets. Yeah. Uh, during go down, I keep the rope in my body and i had only two steps and totally i didn't have power you know it was terrible because i i i know that uh when i when i will when i uh leave a rope i will lost more than one minute and i will i will not go uh on the finish line in time cap so i had uh, only one shot <laughs> And uh, and uh, I had only two moves. I, you know, I did a big tension in my stomach. I did a big tension in my legs and probably in everything in my in my neck, in my in my uh, ears and in my eyes. And I keep my one hundred percent my body. And I feel after workout, uh, 
that I I did it, but not not too much, you know. Yeah. It was very, it was very, very, very. Jak ty jest dziwne, kochanie? Little. Very straight experience for me. But I did it. Yeah. You know, it was it was a workout with rope and uh, pirouettes and the rest was the. Mm, I did it the worst from my every workouts because I, I I was probably 25th place but I was the the most the most happy I was the happiest after this workout because I, I the, this workout included a lot of my uh, weakness like that's workout, workout number I, six Mihal that was six yes, yes the workout number six yes exactly yeah, I should, won with yeah. myself, you know? I won with my witness, and it was the biggest success uh, in this day for me. And after this workout, I know, uh, I know, uh, I will be in games. <laughs> wow, wow. Hey, Mihal, I am. Why do you think you are so comfortable going to that um, dark place? Why do you think you're so comfortable hurting? Hmm. You mean uh, what I feel or? What in your life? Like a lot of people, they're not successful in CrossFit because they won't go to that place. Okay, now where, I understand. You know, where, they, yes. where you have to lay on your side. Um, <laughs> yes, what you about know? you make, what do you, why do you think you're comfortable going there? You know, I had the same question today morning because I had an interview with, uh, with my sponsor for supplements and I had a very similar question. Uh, I think that a lot of people have problem with, uh, you know, not if, not with uh, going go to the dark side, dark 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 side type of movie, but the for uh, in my opinion the biggest problem is uh, stay here, you know, because um, for example you can uh, everybody can go for for the very hard zone, very very dark zone, yes, but uh, a success. I think that uh, you can you can you can make success only if you can stay in this uh, in this zone in this dark side. It's my opinion because uh, yeah. For example, I I know a lot of a lot of great athletes. I know I I know a lot of stronger athletes like me. A lot of uh, better in gymnastic uh, athletes like me. Uh, but during workout, I can lose. A for example, uh, in seven minute AMRAP, I can I can lose uh, a lot. I can lost uh, during six minute thirty seconds, but in last thirty seconds is the 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 darkness uh, side of the dark side, and I yeah. can I can I can I can uh, win here. And, and 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 do you know why? Do you tell yourself something? Is there a story you tell oh, yourself because I, you're. That, I think we we're just gonna get the secrets, the Polish secrets. Sorry, I, I think that uh, this problem is only in your head because uh, everybody yeah. has a lot of muscles. Everybody has a lot of uh, good performance, good endurance, good, good, uh, good run, good swim, you know, and good everything. But I think that in this side, in uh, in CrossFit. The most important is your head. Is uh, is uh, for example, what do you um, about what you think uh, during your your workout in uh, in this uh, dark zone? Right? So, for example, if everybody everybody work, if uh, for everybody is very hard. So, why the people um, who one why they why they won yeah you know do you understand me yeah yeah what's their motivation what do they want <laughs> yes my motivation is my family you know mm. i very often i think about my son about my wife i think about my my second son on the on the podium on the you know i would like to uh, 14 years i would like to I would like to be a father who had a lot of success in CrossFit when he was very young. 
and he didn't remember it, I will, I will, I will show him. Look, I won a semis. Uh, I was in the medicine. I was in the games. You had only one half, um, only uh, half year in this moment, and I think that I will. I will, you know, I will increase his character. I will, I will help make a character for for my sons, because uh, who who like no me, eh? Who say it, that last part again? Who what? Sorry. Basically, you're saying it will show your son character what you're doing. Ah, sorry, on the photo. Uh, no, just just what you were saying. M- M- Mahel, don't worry about what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything important. Listen, Mahel, you um, you did um, – uh, I want to look at these two workouts. Was it um, – you took fifth in Linda? Yes. And you took third in the uh, snatch run. Is that correct? Yes, but it was it was not good position. You know why? I why? did <laughs> – <laughs> I will, I will, I will tell you why. Uh, before this workout, I said to my coach, coach, I will win it. It's not problem for me. I will do snatches and I will run less than three minutes in kilometers. It's not uh-huh. problem for me. But okay. I did one no rep <laughs> oh. on the snatches, and uh, I, I saw I lost a seven seconds. For last snatch to uh, you know uh, this no rep and one uh, and one moment when I stop it on the top, uh, judge tell me and I continue it you know and it was a seven second loss and during my running I had problem with stomach for you know I don't know why but during semis I had problem with my stomach like uh, in in uh, sometimes in workout. I feel uh, I feel uh, you know like bubbles like oh yeah stomach. yeah I don't yeah, know yeah, why yeah, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> and I I started to run and I see okay I I saw uh, okay I have uh, three minutes and five seconds okay I will keep it I will increase this 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 pace no problem for me but during when I try it I feel uh, you know it was a block in my stomach. It was uh, my stomach said said uh, said for Michael, don't do it because we will not finish this workout. Oh my God! Okay. <laughs> Who's your coach? Who's your coach? Yes, yes, but uh, of course it's 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 only joke. I am really happy. Yes, I finished it on the uh, third place, and uh, you know I visual. Um, you know uh, I don't know. It's the, it's the word I visualize it. I I uh, imagine it. Imagine that it before. Yeah, because, yeah. Imagine it. Yep. Yes, because you know, uh, during my trainings in the in my gym, when I did it, uh, for example, in uh, two minutes and uh, forty-five seconds, two minutes and fifty seconds. But it's I know uh, I have a barber very very close to to the uh, runner, and it's not it's not uh, with judge. And I know training is training, uh, competition is competition, but. You know, during the run on the on the runner, I saw I saw myself who uh, who go uh, on the finish line first. Hey, who who? Who, <laughs> who who's your coach, uh, Mihel? Who's your coach? Sorry, my I'm coach? trying to keep my shit together here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who's your coach? My coach is Mike from Train Cultures. That's the, that's the group out of Spain. Uh, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Before, yes, I, I he is my coach. You know, for four months, I started <laughs> to work with them for four, four months ago, maybe four, yeah. maybe five. After yeah. open. Um. Hey. Uh. I. I can't wait to meet you in person. I. I appreciate your time. I apologize for the uh, connection. And um. Uh. You're a cool dude. I guess I'll. I'll see you in Madison. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Tell your wife and your beautiful family. Thank you. Thank you very much. And all right, brother. Ciao. See you in Madison. Bye. All yep. the best. Yep. Same to you. Ciao. 
Holy shit. Dude, you guys can't say fucking shit like... <laughs> <laughs> Someone wrote something crazy in here that I fucking got unhinged. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, he's totally... Bo- it, it, it was Borat. Yeah. Can you have him say very nice? Yeah. It got crazy. Oh, my goodness. What was... There was one in here. Some comment in here. I was dying. Um, <sighs> you guys, it is too much. What was it? Uh... Vis- what was the word to use? Imaginate. That's a fucking great word. I'm gonna start using that word. How is that not a word? Imaginate. I just, I just love how he just hung in there. Like he wasn't even. He just. He just kept rolling. You know. Yeah. He made me comfortable. I was like, "Fuck it. This is. This could be really awkward, but I guess it doesn't have to be." Yeah. Sevon, you had one job. You didn't have him say, "Get to the chopper." I know. It, it, I. I. It, it was in my mind for a second. Um, there was one God. There was someone said something in here that was fucking broke me. Have you seen Hiller's recent video, his latest one? Where I did see all, it when he clipped them all together, all to get to the choppers. That was great. Um, uh, where is it? Someone said, uh, kick him out and force him to sign back in. Sevi, can you have him say very nice? I love this interview. Where is that? There was one bubble gut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here this one, Juice Games. Oh, wow, wow. Will will wow. I will snatch and I will run. Very nice. High five. <laughs> <laughs> I like what he's like. I go to the toilet, it's no problem. <laughs> I have a bubble in my stomach. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he killed it. Uh, uh Sabita, Sabita, Sabitha. I think he's doing great. He barely knows the language, but decided to come on and let us know who he is anyways. Yo, yeah, fuck. He's awesome. I love him. He'll be good uh, behind the scenes, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. For sure. God. Mm. Holy cow. That actually went by. That was a pretty fast 40 minutes. Yeah. He just kept, he kept rolling with it. That's what I loved about it. Like, he just kept he just kept moving it, moving it forward. Most people just kind of stop and get all awkward. And Got then uh, Elise Carr Radow said she was going to use morning chalk up for her kid's sex ed. <laughs> hey, why are people losing their shit over Kate Gord- the morning chalk up Kate Gordon post? I can't figure out what's weird about it. Um, I don't know. Isn't that just, she's just on her journey. Isn't that just normal journey shit? Yeah, I'm bringing it up here. She likes um working out and food and fucking. It's like, I don't I thought, know. Was she getting Seems- married to that guy she was dating? And she's a she's a um she's on the training staff. She's someone in, like a big shot in the community. Uh, you may know her as CrossFitter with. Sorry, that's okay. It's more important that it says California Pep. Oh, oh, you already fixed the CA Peptides dot com. Mm-hmm. You did that while the show is going. You're multitasking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give you some. Can we make it a little smaller? The yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Brought to you by ADHD. Did you want to read this or? Oh, sure. You may know her as a CrossFitter with. Whoa, something weird happened. Oh, a CrossFitter with, or maybe you know her as iconic chick with energized the stands of the 2021 Torian Pro before hitting massive snatch. That's a funny. Massive snatch. <laughs> Maybe you're a longtime fan of the sport, but Kate Gordon, better known, no, it should be and Kate Gordon, uh, better known as CrossFit Kate, does far more than just lift, lift heavy. In addition to uh, being on the seminar staff, she runs a nutrition company and um, she's stepping into a leadership position, that of a sexologist, a pleasure advocate, and sex and relationship podcast host. Um, but the comments, people are coming unhinged, dude. Listen, listen. Uh, isn't that one of our listeners, Denise? Yeah. So many more empowering and heroic stories out there to tell this. And the one you choose, I couldn't unfollow you any faster. <laughs> Dude, you listen to the Sevon podcast, Denise. I don't understand. I don't, I don't under. You listen to a 51 year old man. I like you, Denise, by the way. Let me don't get it wrong. But you listen to a 51 year old man trapped in a seven year old seven-year-old trapped in a 51-year-old man's body. I, I, don't, I don't get what the... Um, oh, everybody's losing their shit. Sexologist sounds made up. 
Trust I, it, me, I'm a psychologist. It is made up, but I like her. Like I, I just seems it seems so normal. Like this is what you're supposed to do. She's this is like this is textbook, uh, like the evolution. It's like what Mal and Haley are going through. Like part of it is like scary, but it's like yeah, everyone. It's just the journey. You just yeah. go through shit. You know, you know what I mean? Like everyone wants to know about like at some point in your life, you become very curious about fucking <laughs> like everyone. That's just normal. Sorry. Are you have kids in the room? Sorry, Jake. That was a tough. Way. That was tough. <laughs> no. Sorry. Ron, came, into this at, came into this at an interesting time. Right. I mean, that's just a normal part of human development, right? Like at some point you're like, oh shit, I'm, 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 I'm wow. I thought I was here just to hang out and, and, and just hang out, but really there's a huge sex component and procreation component to this whole being a human thing. <laughs> Taking care of the offspring and all that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, sounds good. Yeah. I mean, you're born and then all of a sudden one day, like at least for me, like all of a sudden it's just like it becomes like 99% of the gig is just like <laughs> either boning or the repercussions of boning. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm glad you speak English. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's very good. It's good yeah. <laughs> Makes it better to um have a conversation, right? Hey, I know this I know this girl um and she's the most beautiful woman on the planet. Like it's just like just her she's just stupid hot and her body's crazy. I don't really know her know her like I know her through uh Instagram. We're friends. Right. And um, uh, um, she told me, she's like, hey, you got to get Jake Douglas on. He's the hottest dude in cro at the CrossFit Games. I was like, yeah, <laughs> no problem. Whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> whatever whatever you need. I got it. Uh, you got tell you. her I appreciate that. Are you, um, are, are, are you, a, um, are, are you like quite the looker? Like when you go places, like if you, if you're like walking around in the mall, do you see girls looking at you and shit? Are you like, is it like that going out with you? Um, no, I don't think so, man. I think it's like, uh, people look at me like I'm going to rob them. That's <laughs> I mean, I'm the guy that gets stopped at every security check, you know, first questions like, what are you a fighter? Like, what, what, what do you do? Yeah. You do have a little bit of a, um, a snatch vibe to you. Like, like you look, you look Scottish and you look like maybe you could collect money for a living for people who are late on their payments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I get that a bit. Yeah. Not the Scottish right. thing, but uh, yeah, the standover guy. I get that a little bit. Why are what are you? Why do you look like that? What 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 ethnicity are you? Like what, where are your? I mean, you're you live in Australia, but do you know like before that where your people come from? No idea, man. No, our um our family tree is like completely lost. We were, we we we've got nothing really to be honest. Do you look like your mom or your dad? Um, probably a de decent mix. Probably. Probably more so, like all my cousins are built similar to to me, so I'm assuming that's probably from my dad's side. That they're all from his. But side. I mean, even your face, you got a unique look. Like, like I, I'm trying to think who you look like. You look like you're famous already. Like you just got a unique face. I don't know, man. <laughs> Adam or Jake. Someone said, "God, the chat is brutal." Which one of his parents is a gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> jeez louise yeah he is oh he is scottish yeah i'm telling you he look you look so scottish you look like you look like the giant like you could be in star trek you could take the you could be the new 21st century version of the scottish guy on there <laughs> yeah i lived in scotland for a few years so i know douglas the, the last name is like a scottish thing douglas is indian there you go uh the, man, dude, you what what a um explosion. Even you've been doing CrossFit uh for, for how long? For ten years at least. Yeah. Earlier, two thousand six. You're a two thousand six guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End of six, start of seven. We uh one of my teachers showed me CrossFit.com. Like he's actually still one of my he's one of my best mates now, but he was my school teacher at the time. So he'd uh I think it was his way of keeping me out of trouble. So and, and yeah. And and then so how old are you? Thirty two. So so like around seventeen years old. 
you found yep. CrossFit. Yep. And then all of a sudden this year, you've kind of at least it, it, from where I'm sitting, you've exploded onto the scene. You know, you even got a nickname. People are calling you Trap Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I um the the explosion sort of happened. I've been on the scene for a lot for a while. Like my first regionals was 2018. Uh -huh. Um, before that, I was playing like high level rugby, and then um. Yeah, I sort of was was always always finishing mid pack at these like regional semis events. I'd have either a top ten finish or a bottom ten finish. I just didn't have any um, real endurance or or high capacity of skill for a few years. Um, and then I sort of was progressing along pretty well. Had a couple of bad injuries, a couple of years out of the game, and came back last year, so twenty twenty two, finished fifth, and then this year qualified through and, and jake um when you say high level rugby does that I, I right away go that means that you can um uh buy a car and pay your rent and also i guess have a savings account like is that what that means like you made money doing it yeah i got paid to play but um not didn't really make me massive income like it was just more like i would i would always have I think there was only one period for a year where I wasn't really working. I was just playing football, but um, but the rest of the time I always had a job. Like I, it just allowed me to travel basically. So so I lived in Scotland for a while, lived in Sydney for a little while. Are, why do countries um import so many rugby players like that? Like, is there really a um, there's a shortage of of good guys and I, I guess when I think of Scotland, I'll just say the UK that they bring guys in from Australia. Yeah, I think it's because uh, of the levels difference. Like our huh. our prof our semi professional scene is probably pretty close to their professional level. So it's like if you get a, a mid a mid range Aussie player, he's probably going to be like a higher level. And we just play different styles of football. Like we're a little bit more free flowing. We have probably more ball skills than what they do overseas. So yeah, they just bring bring us in for a different different component to their team. And and you loved it. You loved rugby. Loved it. Yeah, loved it. And, and 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 then why why transition out of it? Did you feel like you hit a glass ceiling? Um, I feel like I'd nearly bottomed out as the level I could play, and um, we moved mm. back back to my hometown, which is in the country in Australia, like in the in the country area, like rural. Um, and my wife was just starting her nursing degree, so she was about to start university or college. Um, and it was sort of like if I wanted to play any higher, I would have had to move or go back overseas, and we didn't want to sort of uproot again. So I just – I'd found CrossFit as well. I was like, oh, I'll try this. Like this, this seems like a good competitive outlet. How, where did it. you meet your wife? Um, I met her in our hometown. So I – um, it was by coincidence. So I actually broke my hand playing um, rugby, and I moved back to – to Australia to get a surgery and um, I met her that weekend that I, that I'd came back. So if it wasn't for me breaking my hand, I wouldn't have met her. She was working at the hospital. You said, no, no, no. I just met her through like a mutual friend when I got home. Wow. And, yeah. uh, and how old were you? Uh, at that time I was 23, I think, or 22, somewhere around there. No, 20, 20, 21. Yeah. So you've been together for 11 years. Yep, long time. We got two kids now. Oh, congratulations! That's eleven years. That's it. That's a good relationship. Yeah, man. She's um, yeah, <clears throat> we're, we're solid. She's she's my everything. She's she's my sweetheart. And um, so, so you come home, and, and what's the town you live in in Australia? Uh, it's called Tamworth. Can you show? Can you spell that for me? Where is that, Sousa? Yep. Tamworth. T A M. W O R T H. We're sort of, if you look at a map of Australia, you would see like Sydney and Brisbane on the, um, like on the coast. And we're sort of a little bit inland between those two places. You, you have a stoplight in your town? Yes. Yeah, we've got a few. Is, is it country living? Yeah, it's pretty they... country. Yeah, we're the biggest, um, Biggest city in the rural area, if that makes sense. Probably in in the new, in New South Wales, anyway. You have like you have like feed store there, like you know where the feed store is, like a place where you can go buy roosters and like, is it like that? Are there cows? Are there? Yeah, yeah. There's farming all around, like big big farming mining community. 
so so you're there, Jake, and you realize, oh, your wife, you you prioritize your wife's uh, nursing over your uh, rugby, and then and then what do you start doing there? Um, so at that time, I had so there was no affiliate in in my town, and uh, and I wanted to do the open, so we started an affiliate. Um, and, and I was like, I'm a plumber by trade. So I was plumbing and then a little shed came open where, where my plumbing store was. So I would train, open up the gym basically and train people in the morning. And then that's how my affiliate started. Hey, isn't, yeah, so isn't, isn't Jay Crouch's dad a plumber? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And then he, I think he was going to become an electrician or he did become an electrician. Yeah. Jay's a sparky. Yep. A sparky. Sparky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th that's, that's really interesting and, and cool to hear. So basically you affiliated so that you had a place to do the open because you had to be an affiliate to uh, get judged for the open. Yep. By necessity. Yeah. We um when I affiliated, I was only training out of my garage, so I was like an affiliate in my garage for nearly a year, I think. Um, and and what's the name of your affiliate? Snake Athletic now. So Snake did, Athletic, Snake CrossFit by CrossFits. And did you know that it would grow into a full fledged affiliate? No, no, I didn't even when we when we rented the shed, I still wasn't charging yeah. people. I only started charging people because um they there were too many coming in at the time and I was like fuck I need to need to make some money here. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and 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 what's your location like now? What what how can you describe your gym to me now? Yeah, my yeah, it's huge. So we've been through three facilities. Um we're just over a 1000 square meters in size. Um yeah, we've got like 40 odd cardio machines like it's a it's a big space. It's it's really cool. Holy cow. So it's, it's, is it kind of a mix between a globo gym and a CrossFit gym? Like you said, you had cardio machines. Do you have other stuff too? Do you have like lap pull down machine and stuff like that? Yeah, we've got a little bodybuilding area, but no, nah, it's pretty much a full fledged affiliate. Like we're, um, we basically just focus on like Olympic weightlifting and CrossFit. And, and this first, this open that you wanted to do that you affiliated for, um, why did you want to do the open? Did you have games aspirations already? Yeah, I was, I had seen the games. Um, like just by watching it on YouTube or whatever it was on at the time, ESPN or whatever. And, uh, and I just thought, fuck, like I wanted to try it out. And then I'd heard watching the games that they that, that it all starts at the open. So I was like, ah, oh, I'll give that a go. So I just fucked around with it in 14 without having an affiliate or anything and just tried the workouts. And I was like, oh, yeah. So then in 2015, we, um, or the end of 14, I affiliated so we could try the open in 15. And has it been serious for you ever since? Um, 15 was a little bit of a, like, I was still playing footy at the time. So it was, that was pretty hard. But then after 15, yeah, in, from 2016 onwards, it was like, God, I really want to try and do this. I want to see how far I can get. You know, it's, um, looking back on it now, I think I would have progressed much quicker if I had have just tried to find some guys that were at that level as well. See, when I started, I didn't know anyone that was at regionals level. Or I didn't know a games guy. Like, you just don't – you don't know what you don't know. Nine years is a long time to pursue a goal yeah. like this. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> yeah. And and you finally made it. This is your first CrossFit Games, right? Yeah. Yeah, crazy. And, and you're coming in with um, uh, quite the slash uh, – a splash. Uh Lady2742, Sevon, uh, fun time, Sevon. Uh, well, I panicked a bit, but then I handled it in a British accent. It's from Iron Man 3. Fun time to, I well, well, I panicked a bit, but then I handled it. Okay. Well, thank you, Iron Man 3. I stopped watching Iron Man after Iron Man 1. I tried, I couldn't get, I couldn't, I couldn't, but thank you. Did I say thank you? Thank you. Okay, back to the show. Um, and so now you're coming to the games with quite the splash, like, like, like there's some hype around you. Why did you choose to go, uh, HWPO? When did that happen? So I met, mm -hmm. um, and another reason why I really decided to dig in on the games is that I met, uh, Matt Frazier and Matt O'Keefe in Australia in 2016. Mm -hmm. 
um, Matt came for a training camp and, and my wife had bought it for me. And she's like, well, go and see, go and see what you think. So I went and did it and, uh, and I got along with Fraser really well and sort of kept in contact with O'Keefe and yeah, I just, um, I guess I went on my own little journey and then I had like my Instagram was blowing up and I started getting some good results and yeah, I guess I just recontacted with O'Keefe and we sort of spoke about it and yeah, I ended up, ended up coming over to HWPO and yeah, those guys feel like family now. What a trip. You made the connection in 2016 and kept a connection. That's another, that's a long time, seven yeah, years. It's so random too. Like every, every couple of years I'd just like get a message or I'd, I'd message him or if I had a question about something, cause again, like I didn't know anyone in the space. I didn't know a coach at a regionals level, let alone games, you know, and just, we kept crossing paths. So one, so I had a teenager make the games in 2017. So my first CrossFit comp, that I ever went to was coaching a teenager at the games. Wow. Yeah. So, so, and then I'd ran in, I, I ran into O'Keefe at the games then and, you know, say day and whatever, and sort of kept, kept going that way. So, yeah. Why did your, um, tell me about your wife buying you the, um, the training camp. Was that just a surprise? Did she buy it and then tell you, or she told you, Hey, do you want me to buy this for you? No, so she bought it and then told me, and she's like, if you want to do it, I think you should go see us. And I was like, fuck, I can't be that guy. Like, you know, a bit, bit of an ego or whatever. But honestly, yeah. it was the best thing that I did. Went there, threw down with him. We, uh, you know, shared a barbell with some Olympic lifting and stuff, and it was really good. Oh, so how many people were at the camp? Uh, it might have been like 15 maybe. And you got to share the bar with Matt? Yeah. So when you paired up, you got Matt. That's kind of exciting. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Yeah, we just um sort of like we're similar age, we're similar people, like similar sense of humor, I guess. Like we just sort of clicked. That's like in the um, fifth grade when you get to sit by the pretty girl, like when they do the seat assignment. Yeah, and yeah. they put you by the pretty girl. You're like, oh shit, all year I get to sit here. You got Matt at the training camp. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah it was good. It's it's funny. It's probably it's probably little things like that that are like that people don't realize the impact of. And look, here you are. Do you remember anything you learned from that day from lifting with him? Anything uh, that stuck out? I remember the first thing he ever said to me was like, if you fucking lift with, if you bend those arms on your clean again, you're off the bar. Oh. So I had like an early arm bend. I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, just, just little things like, um, you know, fuck, it was funny. Actually, I, I was so raw in a CrossFit. I hadn't had any, like I had no grips, no knee sleeves. I didn't even own CrossFit shoes when I went to this camp. And um. And I remember we did a workout and and I had a pretty good time on it. And he's like, fuck, if you had some grips and shit, like you would, you know, I had to come off the bar because I tore my hands like I was bleeding. And then I get to, um, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do that. So after the camp, I went and bought all my fucking CrossFit stuff. I come over, one of the first workouts he gives us here was like, had chest about pull-ups, but he's like, you can't, you're not allowed to wear grips. I was like, you f fucking told me like, get, get my grips. And now you're telling me I can't wear them anymore. <laughs> so wow man yeah good mental training right yeah hey um uh yesterday it's um uh three o'clock in the afternoon and i know i have a podcast with you so i uh drink a shitload of pre-workout from swolverine i go into the garage and i'm going to uh start a, a workout while i watch a couple podcasts you're on and I got, I'm going to do uh, 10 reps with a 60 pound D ball, uh, just squats. And then I'm going to do five bench press at, um, uh, 150. And then I'm going to be on the assault bike for 10 calories hard. And I'm just going to keep cycling that as I, in, while I watch podcasts of you, Right. I get everything set up and my kid walks out there and he's got his tennis racket. And then my other kid walks out there and my other kid walks out there and they got tennis rackets and they're looking at me. They're like, Hey, throw us some balls. I'm like, all right, I put everything away, fucking have pre-workout coursing through my veins. <laughs> and I throw balls at them for fucking an hour and a half. It's now 4.30 and I'm fucking panicking, right? Mm. I just lost an hour and a half. But I got to do it because it's really what I want to do. What do you do? I Like every interview that you're in, you talk about your kids, your kids, your kids, your family, your family. What do you, you – I'm assuming you can't do that. 
I'm assuming like as you leave the house and someone's like, hey, daddy, come come here. I want to show you I can read this page in this book. And you're like, oh, fuck. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one. But yeah, I we try and schedule it in as best we can. So it's like as soon as dad's finished training at like that that time slot. So we, when when we decided like I was completely all in, we just made a schedule. So me and my wife sat down. It's like, right, I train from this time to this time. I've got this amount of time between. I go this time to this time. And then if we can keep that schedule, then it's like, right, Frank, at at 4.30, daddy's home and he's ready to rock. All right. Oh. So that, that's, that's my time to sort of shine then. And then Ellen would go and do her training or whatever. And we just sort of switch over that way. So discipline schedule, strict schedule. Yeah, yeah. We try and keep it as as best we can like obviously things still you know come up pop up and things like that but it's like if i can stick to that and i used to have like just a daily a daily to-do list and on that to-do list was like i needed one hour of uninterrupted play and that made me feel like a better dad you know like and it just felt like i was still doing things that were that i was supposed to be doing outside of the sport when you say one hour of inter- uninterrupted play you mean with yourself or with your kids <laughs> yeah no with the kids like with the kids okay okay yeah, yeah like cell phone down like no no distractions and, and, and so you can't fuck around like so if you're if your wife says okay you have 3 30 to 5 30 when you get to the gym at 3 30 it, because it's your gym one of the managers of your gym might come over to you and be like hey the plumber's here and he says we need a new toilet do you want to talk to him you're like hey i can't fucking do that i uh-huh. need these two hours to train you figure it out Yep, that's exactly what it's like. So, like, I will we'll have a meeting on – so, Monday is the rest day for, mm-hmm. for us. So, I'll have a meeting with all our staff on um, Mondays. And yeah. then we through the week, we sort of, like, I front load the week that way. It's like, here's everything. Like, and anyone have any problems, whatever it might be, let's figure it out now. And then, yeah, my the guy who, like, manages my gym is, like, one of, if not my best mate, Um and he's awesome. Like he, he won't even bring something to me unless I need to know about it. Like we have a saying between us and it's like, if, uh, don't tell me just the problem, like tell me how you're going to fix it as well. You know? Right. Right. You don't have time for that right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and you have the trust and faith in him. Yeah. Have, yeah, yeah good. I trust him wholeheartedly. Um, in that, in the interview you did, uh, over there in Australia too, you said that you haven't had a drink since 2012. Yep. And that you basically had a moment where you were you were just thinking back. Basically, you heard something come out of your mouth that said, hey, if I wouldn't have been drunk that night, I probably could have won that game. And then you heard yourself say that and you're like, well, that's kind of a douchebag thing to say. I, I did drink. Yep. And the other guy probably didn't drink and he beat me. And now I have an excuse. Yep. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like I would always set myself up with an excuse up my sleeve, you know, if I, if I had a failure or things like that, it's just probably um, not not even on purpose. It was just what I guess I used to do, like that self-sabotage. So I sort of looked at myself one day and I was like, well, you got to fuck, fuck that off, you know, no, no excuses. To, to you, it just seems like um, probably um, just nor- normal. Do you have any examples before that in your life where you had enough self-awareness to make change? I guess basically what I'm saying is, or what I'm noticing is, is you had enough self-awareness to see something and then course correct, right? So, you know, someone who's driving down the road and they're not paying attention and they run over something in the road. Yeah. You were, pay, you were paying attention. You saw something in the road and you, and you, and you switched lanes. Do you, do you remember the, um, having any other experiences like that in life where you had enough self-awareness to change your own course? Yeah, definitely. There was even as a, I remember like as an early teenager, and it was right as I'd met this teacher that I spoke about that I'd met that had uh, introduced me to CrossFit as well. Like the the sort of crowd I was with and the people I was hanging around weren't into necessarily into sport and all that sort of thing. So I'd stopped playing sport for a year or two and and I was like, oh, fuck, I actually really enjoy playing sport and shit like that. And I just probably stopped because I was, it was more of a delinquent thing to do than, you know, actually keep going. So as I sort of noticed that and then I went back to sport, I still kept those, like, I guess, party boy aspects for a little while. Um, but, yeah, again, I had another little 
realization again as I got older and then again finally it was like all right I just can't do this I'm just not a guy that goes for two drinks you know they would just if uh if we were drinking we were drinking it might have you know might have been a couple of days like not that I was an alcoholic by any means but it would just be like it wouldn't be weird to to go missing for a week um (laughs) having a good time you know and and you didn't have any catastrophic shit happen. You didn't end up in jail or naked with an apple in your mouth, face down, like. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not really, man. Like, just uh, I guess it's just yeah, one of those things that when you look back on, it's like it's things like that, like probably realistically could have happened. You know, could have yeah, could have put in some real trouble and things like that. But um, just just lucky, I guess. But. Yeah, I think um, yeah, never. I was never really a, a really bad guy. I was just didn't didn't mind a drink and um, didn't want the good times to stop sometimes. And what's what's obvious to most, but I think needs to be said is it, you don't regret quitting either. You're not like there's never any regret. Like oh fuck, I should have been drinking the last ten years. No, nah, not even a little bit. The only yeah. thing is like my I lost some friends from that. You know, like and it's weird you you stop doing something like that and then all of a sudden you don't necessarily have anything in common with someone anymore so oh, it's, right it's hard to catch up or it's hard to do anything because they some people just want to catch up over this over the social moments it's kind of like having a drug dealer like the guy i used to buy weed from in college like he was my friend and then i stopped smoking weed and like i don't go over to his house anymore it's nothing personal i'm just not gonna like why would i go over there yeah exactly that's exactly exactly what it's like yeah. And in someone like you who has kids and who is training at the highest level also, this is going to sound bad, but um, it's the truth. You can't, there's a, you have limited time. So for you get rid of two friends and that's the only way you can pick up two new ones. Like your shit is full. Yeah. So I guess when you lose those two, it does actually open room for other people, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And even um, I think like I'm very time, I guess, like aware of where my time and energy is being spent. And like we won't, we won't go a lot of places because it's like if I'm not training towards trying to do this goal, then I need to make sure it's time with my kids. So if we get invited to a party or something like, that, we're probably not gonna go. Like realistically, and our friends that are really tight to us just understand that because like they know the journey we're on and and what I'm trying to do and they know that the, the time away from the gym is super valuable to us. So like the last thing I want to do is go, go and spend it with, I guess, more people away from, um, I feel like I'm away from my kids enough of the time as it is. Does that yeah, make I lo- Yeah. 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 I love a wedding when they invite me and kids aren't invited because then I know I'm not going. Yeah. And that, and that's I'm like, how- thank you. Like, well, how can we possibly do that? We don't, we don't have the luxury of dropping our kids away for three or four days and yeah. we don't, do it like I yeah want you don't want to do with it. me yeah, yeah. I, sorry but i actually want them around me like yeah um uh andrew hiller o- old friends are crazy when you pivot in life but but what is interesting is like i had old friends and then um that maybe i didn't see and then i had kids and then i had they had kids but then we all we came back together yeah right now we had yeah. something in common again we had our we needed our kids to play with each other Yep, yeah, that's happened with us as well. Someone you didn't necessarily speak to for a couple of years, and then all of a sudden, oh, you got kids similar age, and here we are at the park. Right. Or I might not, I might not like you at all, but you're nice to my kid. Yep. Yeah. Or my kid likes your kid. So I guess. What? Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and then you know what? I'll fake it until I actually really like you. Oh shit! I I I, I misjudged you. I like you. <laughs> I don't care that you smell like dog poop. <laughs> um. Are Are you um? how's the affiliate doing is it is it doing well yeah we're going all right like we um it supports me like f- for my ventures so that's um you know n- not a lot of businesses could probably you know business owners could not really work in their in their business at all and still still collect a full-time wage you know you you know what else is interesting too about um, not drinking is when you drink you're influencing other people around you because they're, you're drinking, they're drinking. It's like smoking cigarettes. You're, mm. you're, it's contagious. And when you don't drink, it's the same thing. Yeah. So, so, so people see that, and they people are looking for formulas for success, 
And then they're like, oh, I like what Jake Douglas is doing. I like the trajectory of his life. What are some of the things he's doing? Okay. He puts his cell phone down an hour a day. Oh, shit. He doesn't drink alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, and the cool thing is that over time now, like we'll do social things or whatever. And most of the time it's, it's away from the, from alcohol and things like, cause people just know like I, A, I don't drink and B, if you're drunk, I'm probably not going to talk to you. Like I just can't fucking stand it. I don't enjoy being around drunk people. So, you know, if we've got, it's, it's awesome. Like we do a, a social function at the gym and there's a definite time there where it's like, this is a, like a sober time, you know, kids could be here. Jake's going to be here. And I feel right. like they let their hair down once I'm out the building, but yeah. Yeah. Do they start partying when you leave? They're like, okay, Jake's gone. Roll the coolers out. Yeah. I would assume that that happens. Yeah. Oh, good. Good on them. Yeah. Don't let Jake influence you too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, going back to your wife, buying you that HWPO thing. So, um, I, I guess, um, she believes in you. Yep, she does. She believes in me more than more than I did. Like I've I've probably, you know, considered stopping this pursuit or, you know, pivoting pivoting focus a couple of times. Um, just through through injury or through um guilt that I wasn't spending enough time with the family or whatever. And, you know, she's always brought me back and said, like, look, whatever you want to do, but but also don't don't stop because of any other reason than you just want to stop. Like don't don't let it be an excuse and that's like i'm so grateful for her to you know continue to push and even now i'm i'm in the states alone like my family's back home and i at fir at firstly i was like fuck i might i might not take this game's ticket if we can't all all go together like i, I want them with me and then uh and then she's like, no, you're going and you and you have to go and you're going early like you you are going to go no matter what happens if we if we all can't go for whatever reason, then you're going, no matter what. So, yep, here we are. She's she's awesome. Can you believe that there's people in relationships whose spouses don't believe in them? Bro, I I couldn't I couldn't function with that kind of shit. You know, like I just she's ninety eight percent of my success right there. I know it's it, it's it's crazy. I, I I harp on this a lot in the podcast because I'm not sure if I real if people realize. I mean, for me, for me, I feel so fucking secure as a human being. But the one place that I'm a complete, open, vulnerable sore is my is my wife. Like if she said something to me that didn't believe in me, it would rock me. Oh, yeah, it would, yeah, it would rock me. Yeah, a hundred percent. Or I would um, you know there. It would it would take some amount of circumstance for me to stand down to another human, you know. If they if they were threatening you and you were you know they were threatening your family, or whatever. But I am petrified of my wife at the same time. Like she, like she would stand over. Like I got no no problems. She could do anything, and you know, it, it, does that make sense? Like I yeah the, yeah. the love respect I have for her versus the whole world. Yeah. Um. I. I in. In. In that that moment that she bought you that um, HWPO thing, did you have kids at the time? No, no. I mean, it's such a huge statement that she did that, especially without even asking you. Yeah. Well, man, even when we um, like when she found out that I wanted to do the CrossFit thing, she actually she bought the majority of the the gym stuff initially that we set up. So one Christmas, she like bought me like a, a barbell, bumpers, parallettes, because I was just training with fucking anything I could get my hands on. So, like she's she's a massive reason that we even opened an affiliate because she she bought half the shit for it, more than half the stuff. Yeah, what a cool thing! You have this loving partner that made you kids, and has your back and believes in you on this journey, dude. You're 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 a uh, blessed man. Um, yeah. Do you, do you take her for granted? Uh, yeah, probably sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I take my wife for granted too. That's the weird part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I, I do try and – I really try and not to though, you know. I try and yeah. make her reflect on it and let her know that like, fuck, if it wasn't for you, like you, like, you understand this. Yeah. You know, because I think also that it's um it's hard for, you know, anyone that's that in, in that supporter role like – 
you know, they sort of stand there in the in the crowds when the five thousand people are chanting, low well, cheering for for me, and then she's standing like I feel like that that applaud needs to be going to her. You know, yeah, yeah. I feel like she she deserves that more than more than I deserve that. It's a um, yeah, I think that the supporter roles, fuck oh, man, you gotta you gotta be a, you gotta be wired a certain way to to be that supportive of someone else's success. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm gonna guess also that she fully enjoys it yeah she's good at it yeah. you know, like, and, and like when you succeed I, I bet you she she might even enjoy it more than you do do you know what i mean yeah like she doesn't like she's like yeah yeah i think so like yeah, yeah we did it like she probably it's it's she probably loves it yeah yeah she cried at the semifinal. oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Right, uh, i can't tell you the last time i cried and i uh -huh. i was fucking crying you know, it awesome. felt like weight off the shoulders, you know? Yeah, th that is what that is, huh? It's like an emotional discharge. Yeah, yeah. And just a couple of little things from the weekend, like a few times CrossFit let Frankie come down onto the floor and little things like that. I just thought, fuck, this is a really cool moment in time that I get to spend with my family. And, you know, she's out on the floor and she gets to see the crowd and she calls it the big stage and things like that. And I get to make, you know, I was just, Standing on the podium the whole time, I was just staring at Ellen. Like, fuck, can you believe that we actually did this? There are some great um, – obviously, you got Tia Toomey over there and, and Cara Saunders, amazing. There are some, also some amazing um, men over there who are, like, really um, – unfortunately, I don't know them better than – I wish I knew you guys better, but uh, Rob Forte, Chad yep. McKay, yep. Uh, Ricky Garrard. You have some people, like, some tremendous – uh, uh, I want to say role models for the little bit I I know them all. Just outstanding um, human beings. Even how I, I, I and I definitely throw Ricky in there. How he's handled himself, the way he carries himself. I fucking love the guy. Do you feel? Do you do you feel that in Australia? Like now that like you're going there and you're you're kind of adding to this. Uh, Jay Crouch. What a what a stud. What a awesome young man. Right. Yeah. Is it fun being a part of that kind of that, that group? Yeah, it is. Um, I obviously I don't have any experience in any other region, but like our region feels very, I guess, just supportive, you know, like there's no real clickiness or bitterness or anything like you can just sort of roll in and the warm up areas, you know, there's never anyone being a dickhead. M most people are, you know, genuine and they'll share a bar or it's just always some banter going on. It's a, it's a, like the Oceano re is, fuck man, like the, the Torian itself is crazy. And then the, the athletes are supportive and yeah, it's, um, it is crazy, right? Us, it, it, I don't think the Americans know how crazy it is. It, the video, it's like a triple decker indoor place and it's, it looks completely packed. Yep. Completely sold out. Mad. Um, it's got fucking fireworks and confetti that goes off every night and right. DJs. It's, um, yeah, it's next level, man. It's like, it feels what a palooza, but like a street fight version because it's so compact. Yeah, and bigger, significantly bigger than what a palooza in terms of just the ven how many people that venue holds, right? Yeah, it looks that's like right. It's more people. Yeah, I think there's um, I think inside has a capacity of five or six thousand. From what is it deafening in there when everyone gets all yeah. hummed up? Yeah, like when uh in the semis when I hit that snatch, it fucking erupted, like it was wild. I I don't think I've heard a louder like crowd moment yeah yeah like almost like where are my kids is someone covering their ears yeah. shit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey and then baden brown you got the family man and then yep. you and then you have a uh, um a uh, royce dunn yep yeah what a great group of uh of of gentlemen yeah yeah we're the like you train with any of those guys no nah, i don't i'm pretty far away from most to be honest like i haven't <laughs> really done any training with any high level guys my whole career what um what's it so how long have you been doing hwpo uh, i only jumped over to hwpo officially in uh i think it was december and you show up there you're in vermont now yep and you show up there and it's uh jason hopper and katrin yep and uh christine Colenbrander. uh christine wasn't here it was just uh jay and cat and uh and, and you now yep a anyone else coming up there um, we've got Vic in town at the moment, Victor Hopper. Um, 
and we've got um, Jacqueline Dahlstrom here as well, just um, throwing down a little bit. So that's cool. Oh, and we've got Rogan, um, Dean, the adaptive guy from Oceana. Okay. Yeah, so we've got, um, we've got a good good crew, actually, at the moment. And is every part of you, like, how long did it take uh, when you got there to adapt f- uh, with not being with your family? Have you been able to, like, slowly let that go? Uh, honestly, man, I struggle with it a bit, hey. Like, most mm. days it's like, you know, like, this is not how I wanted it to play out. Um, but, it, like, the, the HWP guys have been really supportive as well. Like, you know, Matt will ask me most of the time, like, how are you doing? How's your family, you know? So it's just, yeah, they're just really supportive. Is this the first time you've ever been away from them like but this? Long, yeah, I think I did. I've done a week before when it was just <clears throat> Um, but now we've got the two of them. So this is by far like I'm at, I'm at triple the uh, the amount of time I've ever been away for now. Will they come to the games? Um, no, I don't think so. It's just a little bit too far. Like Johnny's two. Um, yeah. And yeah. just that, that trip, we just, you know, Ellen will probably realistically be able to see more if she watches um, the the stream versus chasing two kids around the, the stadium. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Um, so then when you're, when it's over, um, on Sunday, do you have, do you already know when you're going back to Australia? Yep. I'm, uh, at the moment, I think it's like a 6am flight on Monday. No shit. Out of Chicago? Uh, no, out of Madison. Oh, that's nice. That's better. Yeah. And then you'll go there and you'll be in quarantine for seven years and then you'll get to see your kids when they're nine. Yeah. No, sorry, sorry. I'm just saying. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> that shit's all done there, right? Yep. Yeah, it's all done. As long as you got your jabs, you're all good. Within yeah. Enough. All right. Yeah. Uh, wow. And um, how how is the HWPO thing going? Is, is this the first? This is the first time you've had a a coach. Pretty much. Yeah. No. Oh, not really. I was uh with raw strength and conditioning for a while, like uh, Big Bad Bobby D. Remember, he was uh Brent Fikowski's coach. I don't remember what year were you, what year was he your coach? Um, like 18, 18, 19. Around Did he then. ever have eyes on you the way Matt has eyes on you? Um, a little bit. I trained at his house a few times. Um, Rob would more so like jump in, train with you, things like that. But the way Matt coaches, I've never had, had a coach like, like Matt's very hands on, invested. And, you know, there's always like, I guess people don't think of it, but like HWP, they've got Matt in the building all the time, Jake Marconi in the building all the time. And at the moment, Steve Fawcett's in the, in the house um, and Josh as well. So it's like, they've got, there's four coaches always rolling around the place, watching, they watch every workout we do, bit of feedback, bit of technique. Like it's, um yeah, first time really having that. Yeah. It's interesting. I was talking to uh, Fee Sagafi yesterday and this is her first time, um, being in training with a coach, like eyeballs on her. She got Matt Torres and she's loving it. Are you loving it? Oh man, I love it. Even, uh, even when I made, you know, like international teams with weightlifting, I would get to hold some numbers. Yeah. Here's what we, here's what we're hitting today. Here's our lifts. Like go hit it. Like I never got technical feedback because I was just lifting decent weight. But here it's like Matt spoke to me about some snatches immediately. First day, first day here. Um, you think you're coming back with your family before the games next year to train there? Yeah, that would be the plan for sure. Like, yeah, I, I won't do this again without the family. And um, and now that I've scoped it out and I know how how welcoming it is here and I know the area a little bit better, Um, yeah, we, I'd love to do like a six-month stint in the States. Uh, Eaton Beaver. I don't know if we have time for that today, but – um, uh, I re-enlisted, I re-listened to Saturday's podcast, how lucky we are to have access to coach Glassman. Oh, thanks. You know, this isn't coach Glassman though. This is, um, Jake Douglas, but thank you. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. If you give me, um, a money, Heidi, uh, sorry to put you on the spot. Heidi is, um, uh, is this guy, Jake, uh, is this guy, Jake Chapman? No, no, this is uh, Jake Douglas though. No, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a uh, Roy Roy Dunce. No, no. <laughs> Close lady. No. 
uh the 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 format of the games do do you think about that at all do you have any time to think about things like cuts or um uh what the workouts are when they give the clues do, do you try to process any of that um a little bit i think it's just more just what you said like process it you know like it's something that's there and it is what it is and you know for me like um i'm pretty aware of like i'm gonna have some really good events and i'm gonna have some really bad events as well so i just um it's just one at a time you know like fucking 5k gets announced and you see it, it's like all right it is what it is and then the ollie total gets announced and fuckers send me dms for days it's like i'm as excited or concerned about the 5k as i am the ollie lifting at this stage like for me it's event one day one and then it's got to be event two day two if i get too far ahead of myself i'll get cut oh look there it is that's what i was looking for uh such a beautiful man yeah that's what my friend was telling me. They were saying that Jake Douglas is the most beautiful man at the CrossFit Games this year. Jeez, I don't know about that. Is this the first you're hearing this? Yeah, it's the first I'm hearing it. Wow. All right. Well, I'm, it's kind of that's what we do on this show. We kind of break break big stories like that. <laughs> Empirically driven. Um, uh, did you do you does do you um use the word values? Do you, um, like, yep. Yeah. yeah, like core values, yep. Yeah, what does that mean to you? Core, to me, when you say um, I think it's like um, it's like a checklist to live by. That's how I think about it. You know, like does it align with my values? Does it align with the things um, that I, you know, at the very core of who I am? That, that's how I think about that. Can you give me an example? Uh, so ch a checklist, what, what did you call it? A checklist of what? Yeah, just like a, a, a daily checklist if nothing else that's how i would you know describe myself and if i could live by those actions or um or those uh those key principles i guess does that make sense yeah 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 and and um who introduced that idea to you values um that's a, i don't know actually to be honest i think it's just something i started thinking about over time and and it's like if i you know if i start to question a decision or if i'm a little bit lost as to what i'm like where i'm heading does it just fit with my my values like does it does it meet my checklist of who i am you know and then if it does then it's a if it does then it's an easy decision if it doesn't then it's also an easy decision so it's, i guess it's just taking the guesswork out of out of choices and you know like like yeah, how did you learn that? Did you read that in a book or are you religious or did that come after you had kids or did your wife teach you that or? I don't know, man. I think it's just something that I started thinking about and it was like, so, because you know how you just have these things that pop up and it's, you just have to make a decision if you're going to do it or not do it. Yeah. Like, well, if I, the easiest way for me to figure something out is that if it fits in with who I am or it doesn't. And then if I've got that shit in my head, like, um, and just makes it easier for me to make the, the choice on it. So it was just like, I guess uh, it was something that I came up with to dumb down decisions. So I don't, I don't even have to think about it away from, does it just line up? Like, does it fit in one column or the other? And then there's a the decision made. So as a kid, um, I, uh, if I was walking down the street and I saw a wallet, uh, I would open the wallet, I would take the money out and then I throw the wallet in the, um, uh, <laughs> mailbox in the in the public mailbox right yeah you know what i mean so like you yeah, get yeah. back to them and i would just take the money and then i would go buy candy for my friends or video games and i never would think twice about it yeah and now i wouldn't do that because one of my values is tr treat people the way you would want to be treated mm -hmm. but it wasn't that i was a bad person i just didn't have any values Yep. I, yeah. It wasn't the or if it's like if you if I if you and I were walking and we and we saw some eggs and then we saw cars driving by, we would just start throwing the eggs at the cars. I wouldn't even think about the repercussions. Yeah. I wouldn't even think we were doing anything wrong. I wouldn't think. But yeah. somewhere along somewhere along the line you start to get um I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah, maybe a conscience. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 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 you um, stop no, acting like a donkey yeah i'm the same and i even think about you know things that fit in with me and then i have to keep that um that going through my actions as well it's like you can't just say what your values are you have to you know you have to live by them and then make sure that even when no one's watching those things are, are happy yeah yeah, yeah. i talk yeah. to our kids about that stuff as well and then i walked past a bit of rubbish the other day and i fucking took a step past it and i saw it on the ground and i was like fuck 
Yeah. Yeah. So pick it up now. Cause like I, I talked to Frankie about that. Like what it's, you know, do the right thing. Even when no one's watching, that's what's important. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've got to do it, you know? And yeah. like, if, even if you don't want to do it, if it's within your values and fucking do it, otherwise take it out of values, you know? Right. It, I guess it's that thing and be the change you want to see in the world too. You have yep. to, you want to live in a civilized society where people return wallets and you got to fucking return wallets. Yep. Yeah. Then if you want your wallet returned when you lose it, you best be handing one back. Like, yeah. 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 It's a trip. You think that I'm um, having, and it sounds like having kids really affected that for you too. Like maybe you care more, you want a safer, cleaner, healthier environment. Yep. I think so. And, um, and you want your kids to be a good human, you know? So don't yeah. like, they'll fucking copy what you do before they listen to what you say. So. Yeah. They're your legacy, right? Yep. Um, uh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Now they're uh, such a beautiful man. Uh, here's a heart. Um, uh, Dan Guerrero, Jake, has anyone told you of the build of Drax the Destroyer? I don't know who that is. Yeah, off Guardians of the Galaxy, I think. Um, no, that's the first time hearing that. Thanks, man. I guess. Uh, his eyes, uh, Corey, this dude's a unit. Thanks, um, man. Oh, uh, Blade Walker. It's uh, the baby face with the Hulk body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Korg from Thor. I don't I don't remember that. Yeah, um, get that one a little bit. Uh, wow, okay. Um, all right. Uh, wh what will happen now today? I'm assuming it's uh, 11.30. Have you trained already? No, I rest day today. And then, so what will you do the rest of the day? Is, is that hard for you? The uh, rest day? It is now, like, usually rest days are good. Like, I'll live for them because I know that's the day that I've got that's, like, family day, meeting day, set ourselves up, don't have to be in the gym. Over here, it's hard because it's like, well, fuck, I'm here to train. Um, Got to sit on my hands a little bit, you know? What will you do? Will you watch a movie or will you go for a walk? Um, no, I will go get some shopping, do my laundry, and probably have a uh, sauna and ice bath combo. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. All right, brother. Uh, thank you so much uh, for doing this interview. Great to meet you. You too, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in Madison. You too. You'll be there, right? I am going to be there. Yes, sir. Uh, very cool. And say hi to the gang for me. Say hi to uh, Katrin and uh, Mr. Fraser and O'Keefe and Mr. Marconi and, uh, and, and to give Jason Hopper all my love. All right. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. All right, dude. Thank you. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye. What are you laughing at? Nothing. <laughs> Everybody wants me to like pull up pictures of Marvel character he looks like. And I don't know if that's appropriate when he's on. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Dude, that's a rip off of the thing from Fantastic yeah. Four. That's just a complete rip off that character. I've never even heard of these characters. How do people have time to watch these movies? I'm assuming you all have kids. That's probably why. I see that movie pop up every once in a while trying to get me to watch it, Guardian of the Galaxies. It looks fucking stupid. I think that they have a raccoon superhero, if it's what I think it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm what like, you said no fucking thank you. <laughs> one time My... you said Go ahead. Sorry. No, you go ahead. I was gonna say one time you said something about those movies that like completely explained it for me. You're like, I can't spend my belief, my disbelief for like that long. Or, yeah. Like, I can't it's... spend my belief. And it was like, yeah. I, I think that 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 that, that uh, SpongeBob, they have the one-eyed pickle. They have the villain that's the penis is more realistic than the <laughs> shit going on at uh, Marvel. Marvel is horrible. I don't know how anyone watches eighty percent of that shit. Yeah, it's seriously right. like watching someone play a video game. I which may I guess Twitch is huge, right? People, there's millions of people who. Dude, think. I would rather be a drunk than be addicted to watching people play <laughs> video games. Yeah. <clears throat> It's great you guys are sour pusses. Is that it? I don't know what it is, but I just you watch I would it with so much I would so much rather go in my backyard and sit and watch the Robins and Blue Jays fight over mulberries. <laughs> look at look at look at kinda huge. 
from Paper Street Coffee over on Twitch. On Twitch. Damn, Gabe. <laughs> damn, Gabe. You know Hiller's got the biggest heart on right now because that dude doesn't drink. Mm. And Hiller don't drink. He's like, well, you see, that validates my uh, proof that of concept <laughs> that uh, if you don't drink, you uh, look at uh, me and Jake Douglas. We are both... Um, he definitely falls in that uh, one's too many, ten's not enough category. Uh, J- Jake? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like, it wasn't that big of a deal. I would just disappear for a week. I was like, what the? <laughs> uh, Clive uh, McLaughlin, seven, seven, Sevi, Sev, Sevster, sev, Sevenitis. Uh, I know your DMs are full. I'll do it for you, Clive. I love you. Let's see what's going on. What do, what do you got for me about camera gear? Dude, I, I was up way too last night fucking around with camera gear. Look, I just followed you back, Clive, too. Oh. Mm, wow. Can I play? Oh. Shit. I opened this. Uh, oh. Not sure if the wireless go battery life through the shotgun mic probably best for long day. Uh, oh. Shit. That's interesting. Uh, oh. Uh, what the oh, okay, great. I, uh, I'm texting with uh Mariah. Um, but um, he sent something interesting. I better text Dave right now, too. Uh, <clears throat> I will call you in a minute. I need to figure out how to apply for another um wow. access. Wow. Holy shit. Did you see this fucking text message that just came in? On the big thread? Or maybe I'm not on the Oh, you're not on this thread. No. Left out of the thread. Dun, dun, dun. Well, that it brings a smile to my... Cool. Brings a smile to my heart. Okay, that's a good sign. I'll give you one guess who it's from. Um, they're an HWPO athlete. Um, O'Keefe. No, wait. You said athlete. You said yeah, athlete. But but O'Keefe is on the thread. Um, Hopper. No. Oh. Catherine. Yeah. 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 It's good. Like, it's good. Yeah. Okay. It's good news. Hey, we have like a couple people that are um, in the pipeline that need to be scheduled. I or can just like out of slots, huh? I, uh, I'm a bit late. Looking forward to watching the Jake Douglas interview. Hey, Allegra, it could have been better. I need like four hours with the dude. I really fucking liked him. I, I wish he was my neighbor. Him and my wife would be great friends. Excuse me. Um, yeah, like uh, Aunt Haynes. Mm-hmm. Uh, J, what, uh, JR's um, the the adaptive athlete. Yeah. Did you did you see I stuck Jedediah Snelson into the Fridays of CrossFit Games update show? Oh yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, that's cool. Jedediah's a good dude, so that'll be a fun show. I didn't want to do it, but um, the I got a call from DEI council. I had to have a guy, uh, <laughs> black guy or a guy in a wheelchair on the show. <laughs> Get out! And of I here. was like, I, I am the black guy. Then they're like, Well, then you got to have a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> We've already checked that box again. Yeah. What are you talking about? We can't check it anymore. Yeah, it's Shelby Neal on. We're good. Fine. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> box checked. Shit, dude! I've told a hundred people about the Shelby Neal podcast. Anyone who will listen to me. <laughs> I cannot fucking believe it. I cannot fucking believe it. Heidi got that. Uh, Sevon, you would let him be friends? <laughs> no, not him. I thought that's what you said too. What do you- no, her, his wife, his, his, <laughs> listen. <laughs> the charity show with Jedediah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> 
So he told you he's going to uh, fit right in, right into that show. We just need more. I, I just love you in the comments. So that's it. I just recruited you. The show last Friday was so funny. Look at, oh, look at, yeah. look at Kazavi on Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan shows so racist that they even got a white redheaded girl to represent the black people. Mm-hmm. That piece of shit. I guarantee you that there's people like that. Yeah, haters gonna hate, bro. Uh, the Friday show is gonna be fun. Uh, with Jedediah, we got Jedediah, uh, Brian Friend. Uh, been a while since he's been on. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Jer Howell, mm-hmm. uh, Tyler Watkins. Yep. Yeah, that that that's gonna. Anyone else? Is it? And me and you and Caleb will all be hanging around. Yeah, and then we're gonna go through the app. That'll be cool. Have you messed around on the app yet? Or are you signing up? Like, no, I'll do it in real time. time so yeah. there's one dipshit who doesn't know what's going on. But I, I, I really don't want that to be the whole show, though. We can no, come out hard with it, like for 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't think it'll be the whole show. I just think a okay. nice ex- explanation and kind of walk you through it, and you could see what it's about, and everybody else will too. I think it'll be cool. I don't think Jedediah gets to. I, I was texting with him. He doesn't get to compete at the games. They only have like limited adaptive classes. Like yeah. yeah. But Casey Acre does, right? When he was on, he told us he's competing. Yeah. And then someone else was telling me as I was digging into the adaptive stuff, I'm trying to remember who it was, if it was Jedediah, but I spoke to someone on the phone. <laughs> well, did, Jed, did we interview Jedediah um, when he was in Hawaii? I think he was in Mexico, but yeah, he's on vacation. Okay. A- and someone was saying that there, the actual – is it the wheel wad event is more – is the more prestigious right competition adaptive event yeah oh you got kicked out what you tried to come in the back end and you got kicked out again you want me to send him a link yeah he uh susa will send you a link i didn't know you were trying to get in the back end yeah hiller you're trying to get in our back end i kind of um oh he's too disabled maybe jedi is too disabled for the games yeah i don't know but but what is interesting is that JR's girl, I kind of want to understand the adapt. Dude, this is a perfect example why I like the cuts. I'm so much more interested, this is going to be fucked up to say, in the adaptive classes when there's fewer. Mm. You know what I mean? If there's like, hey, these are dudes with no legs, these are dudes with no arms, these are people with cerebral palsy. Those are the three categories. Yeah, just less to like focus on. Is what yeah, you're yeah, just- yeah. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying. Right. Uh, yeah, Jedediah was saying that. Okay, so Bailey agrees with me. Oh, no, no Friday show. Oh no, you're on it too. <laughs> hey, but Hiller, you're you're on Friday show too. You didn't get kicked out again. But I, I'm telling you, Tyler is only having you there for your star power. You are fucking. You have turned yourself into nothing but a piece of fucking. Uh, you're a YouTuber eye candy. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the truth. Just a shirtless fucking you kill you guy killing it on YouTube. And so he wants you on there to help promote his. I don't think there's any problem with using you like that either. But I guarantee Tyler's just using you. <laughs> like, 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 oh, there he is. Here he is. Let him defend himself. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Hiller, hi. Well, Are you okay no, getting Friday used? Show. I got kicked out of Friday's show. <laughs> no, no, you're back in. You're back in. I just forgot about you. I forget about you. It's okay. Forgettable. Look at Watkins says that's a lie. That's not a lie. It's a damn lie. He's nothing but a fucking good body and a fucking strong YouTube following. That's it. Hiller, what is going on with your look? Yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't even, I I hardly recognize you. You got this little hair hanging down and your beard's going up to your ears. And I just worked out. Sometimes it'll flip and flop around. I did Helen. How was it? Hard. No grips regular makes it Helen? harder. Regular Helen? Regular old Helen, yeah. Yeah, we're doing that today at the gym. Yeah. So uh, I'm, more, I'm more afraid of working out at your house uh, Monday morning than I am um, than f- to film the behind the scenes. I was curious if you were actually going to let me make you work out. Yeah, I'm gonna. I and hey, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a big ass scoop of whatever fucking pre workout you have. I'm gonna work out with you, then we're gonna get into the car all sweaty. And then we're, I'm going to go to Jr. and Taylor's, and I'm going to uh, work out with them. Mm. Oh, you're going to do I'll twice? Check, 
double. Yeah, and then so, I'm gonna check all my boxes uh, boxes of uh, like social engagements done. Yeah, and also too, you want to do a heavy deadlift and GHD couplet at Hillers, right? That was like, <laughs> like a week off with something good, maybe like fifty and fifty for three rounds. From what I understand, and, and, uh, Stefan's back is really good with the deadlift. Yeah, he'll be solid. Wait, what? I'm seven thirty nine. I will do. I haven't done a GHD in years. I will when I'm there at your house. Do like five GHD, and I'll probably mm. be sore the whole week. I'll just do five. And I, seriously, I'm not joking. I'll probably be sore forever. It's been a while since you've done one, dude. Years, does five it, years. Does that mess with your back? I don't think so. I used to be great in them. I used to be able to fucking destroy those. Did you notice any sort of uh? And Susan, maybe you can talk to this. There's the members of the affiliate who would just kind of finish off their day with a set of 50 GHD sit-ups because they thought it would make them have abs because of how yeah. just devastatingly sore you'll get from it. So I was wondering yeah. if one, Sevon had crazy abs from being good at them, and two, if you have those people, Susan. No, I never – I I had never have had abs in my life. The GHD did nothing to me. I could do fucking 100, I feel like. I've seen you have, like, those top two abs. Yeah, it's just <laughs> I have nothing. Yeah, I definitely got the HDers after the uh, after the class. Although they tend to fall off pretty quickly, especially the first time, because one guy will have been doing it for like a while, so he's conditioned to it. And then somebody else will be like, "Hey, what do you do over there?" Like, "Oh, well, come try out. We're just gonna do five sets of ten. And they're like, "Okay." And then they're wrecked for a week, and they're like, "Fuck that." Yeah. <laughs> uh, I won't hurt my. I won't hurt myself. Five. I think I could do five without. But but I do think I'll be sore from it for the whole week. I'll do five. And I do. I do seriously think I'll be, that's how potent that movement is. He had an ab. He had the top abs popping out last time I saw him in California. Yeah, he's got that HWPO that filter on there. Man. You're solid. What filter? Hey, what did you think? That, of, that did you watch Jake? Did one? you watch Jake Douglas Hiller? Fifty percent. I. It's weird. I like watch certain parts whenever I can, and then I go watch the rest later. You're. You, I. I, I was trying to keep you really, up with all of it. You're a fan of his. I like his state of mind. Oh, yeah. I, I Like you said, I, I enjoy the fact that he sees how bad drinking can be for you, and he just completely avoids it. And people who will make him do that or put him in that position. Uh, but, but, yeah. What do you think about his body? You think, do, do you, are you, well, yeah, what do you think about his body? Let's start there. Let's be Yeah. Gentle. Yeah. Tell it to us. Because he looks like he'd be tall, but then he, I also saw him next to Fraser the other day, and he didn't look too tall. At which rate, that kind of distorts reality. He's a, and then I saw a picture of Catcher next to Fraser the other day. And she's wow. Crazy. Yeah. Now Did she is in picture? the foreground. She is in the foreground, and she well, is on the edge, edge the of the size picture. Of his head. He's huge. But Thank she you. does look like she could eat Matt in that picture. She makes Matt look like a little like like he's just a coach like a, he does not look like an athlete next to her and jake's seven foot tall jake douglas I mean, six foot. <laughs> well, he is really on steroids. there's yeah, no way he's not on steroids and if he's seven feet tall no no he's six he's six feet tall. 80 180 okay. yeah six feet hey he's a trippy looking dude scan my face for peptides oh that's awesome oh. Souza. and look it looks like a little tiara with the capeptides.com, capeptides.com. Fix your shit, get it right at capeptides.com. Use code SEVON for free shipping. Don't be a little bitch. Thank you. How are your peptides coming along? Biceps all good? Yeah, you want to know something fucked up, dude? So yesterday um, I picked up the 100-pound D-ball, and I was doing some front squats with it. I did, I, did, I did one front squat with it, and I was just warming up for a workout. And then, and then I was, it just had one eight. I was going to do with this workout with a 60 pound D ball and a, uh, 150 pounds on the bench. So I did, I did one to, to warm up. I did I think I'm stupid. I did one front squat with a hundred pound D ball, one bench at 180, two, two front squats with a hundred pound D ball, two bench with 180. And I went all the way up to five, five and five. And then I, and then I dropped down the D ball weight down to 60 and the bench down to 150. And I got at it doing sets of 10 with the 60 and uh, sets of five with the um, 150 and then working in a salt bike. And I do that so I can watch the podcast. And I, and I did that for 45 minutes. But picking up that 100 pound D ball injured my fucking bicep again. Just holding it like this. You really like that's one of them. Yeah. 
You mean uh, front squats with a D ball? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And then that clean and press. Yeah, you hate that. <laughs> I hate that. You I hate, hate that. That's kind of, I hear you do that every three days. At least it, it, with a slow, controlled, eccentric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even say it's a clean. It's a I just a curl and press. A curl. Yeah, yeah, bicep curl. And press. You're just disguising a bicep curl. I've been doing these too. Mm. Well, try the most flexible shoulders. Thank I'll you. never forget the Asian man stretch that you did the one day looking out the window in Newport. <laughs> you turned around, you looked out the window, and you did one of these. I, I can't even do it with my shoulders. The, anyway, the, I fucked the, my bicep up just picking up a 100-pound D-ball because, you know, you have to go like this, and you have to roll it up there. And just while I was holding it, I was like, ooh, I fucked that thing up again. I've never benched two. I've never benched two twenty five. One of the best benches I've ever done was recently. I did. I think I did like five sets of five with one eighty when Hiller was at my house or something like that. Susan was there too. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. I've never. Uh, that's probably the most impressive thing I've ever done with bench. I suck at bench. Bench preps. Bench we press. Can bench when you're here, okay. it'll be good on, on a okay. real sized bench press. Yeah, that would that not would. on a jazzer size step up bench with a <laughs> with the kid squat rack from Rogue. Held Dude, together with zip ties. Twenty percent, twenty percent. Your bench will go up. Not using that setup. I swear to God. I love bench press too. Even though I suck at it, I really like it. You agree, Souza? What's that? Like just him using a legitimate bench press setup is going to make it go up 20%. It's that <laughs> Undoubtedly, bad. dude, that setup is so sketch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It works, it yeah. works, but... Uh, it works, but yeah, I agree that getting yourself in a, a, a better setup from the start is going to help significantly. I guarantee five more pounds on that bench press. Easy. Seven. Hey, Colin. That would be cool. I did Helen. I did Helen for dot com one time. I'm, it's the video somewhere on dot com. I did Helen against um, against an athlete, and that's Which probably two thousand seven. Some uh, some girl who is a, a ultra marathon runner. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, James, is it? No, it was. I did it against a girl with the, this really skinny chick with huge fake tits. It was crazy. Was it in Los Angeles? And she was really skinny. No, I did it in Santa Cruz. Yeah, okay. But I... Interesting. I did this ser whole series of, of videos where I would compete against females in the CrossFit space. It was Tony's idea. It was actually pretty cool. Hey, Clive, can I play this um, t uh, text message you sent me on the air? Can I listen to this? I'm afraid if I close it, I'll never go back to it. Is this it? No. Damn. No. Cross but Santa that's Cruz. the girl. I think that might be the girl I did it against, though. See that girl right there? Uh, uh, that No, that's Nicole. That's Annie. That one right there. Push play on this a second. That might be the girl I did it against. What in the orange top? Yeah, that is the girl. Ah, that's hilarious. That's the girl I did it against. What are the odds there's another Helen workout from Santa Cruz around the same time period without you in it? Yeah, with, maybe you imagine uh, you were in this video because you watched it so much. And um, and and that guy with the hat on backwards—that's Allison NYC's husband now. Uh, I know him. Mm. Yeah. There we go. This is what the swings are going to look like at the games, dude. Just am I like going to get in trouble for how long you're playing this, uh, Michael no, Banyan? Muted, dude. Oh, uh, mm. yeah, that's the girl I did it against, Michael Banyan. Um, 1999 bench is a little overrated. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. and also if I like it. Agreed. It must be overrated. What? I love these pull-up bars in the garage doors. The Whenever I see one, I really like it. it. This is the same video. I'm not yeah. going to find it now. I thought that was it though. Susan, what's your Helen time? We'll find out today. Find out today. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember what my last one was. I I think my goal is always trying to get for sure like sub nine. So hopefully I'll hit that today. Maybe she seven. does have she does have huge fake tits. What are you talking about? She does not have huge fake tits. She had huge fake tits. Did you see her huge fake tits in that video? Seema will be into the judge of that. They weren't huge. They were fake though. You guys have just <laughs> been desensitized over the years. At the fifty yard line. What uh have you ever seen a sub seven Helen in person, Susa? 
No. Have you seen a video of one? Maybe Spieler back in the day on the track. Okay. Is that one of the ones? Maybe. How does swings look? Good, legit. Not this like. Thanks, we call it the like a uh, Harley Davidson uh, low low rider handlebars. You oh, ever see like, like a, you got like the, or the really high handlebars and the guys are sitting like, like, they're like, don't let your kettlebell swings look like this. The other thing I normally do too is I'll have people grab a lighter kettlebell and then pause and hold it like this with the top of the kettlebell facing the ceiling, arms locked out for like a two or three count and then come back down. So that way when they get the heavier kettlebell, they know what that extension and, and what it actually looks like at the full range of motion. It's a completely different movement when you lock the kettlebell out like that overhead. Well, yeah, because if you come here, you could do this, and then you could pull it back down, right? And then like, if you like lean into it and do like the head, the head like throw and lean into it, then you're selling that last bit of range of motion short, which over the course of sixty three reps matters a lot. Seven, how much grip talk did you have with Jr. last night? I haven't finished that one yet either. I can't even remember. It was a fucking whirlwind, but hey, dude, he was good. He was he was just so rolling. Good. Yeah, I he know. was just rolling. He, he's real good. He, uh, I That'd wonder if there was more money in this sport, he could be rich as a consultant. That that show last night would cost him cost you like thousand dollars just to have him on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. man, I mean, if there was more money in this sport, <laughs> we'd all be rich. <laughs> If I if yeah. I'm an athlete, I if I'm an athlete and I have a coach, I still consult with JR. Fuck. Let me if, if I'm a coach, like if I'm Max L. Hodge or if I'm Matt Fraser or if I'm Rich Froning or if I'm any or Jake Jake Locker or whatever, I I I ask to pay JR a hundred bucks a week to to listen to him talk for an hour. There's nothing to Probably lose. Worth more than that, too. The thing is, is he's just seen so much fucking shit. He just keeps looking and looking. He the, he's like a the, that uh, dog that keeps digging holes in the, in the front yard. <laughs> yeah. His notes last night were pretty extensive, right? Yeah, I had fifty. I, mean, I printed that, out fifty-five pages of notes. Yeah, dude, all that stuff that you he had. Fucking fifty-five pages. That's a book. Yeah, dude, all those like screen shares and stuff that. Caleb was showing like JR totally like had the whole Dude, thing down. Like yeah. yeah. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. You can sell that. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, so if you're a coach and you just consult with them for an hour a, a week, then basically what you could then you can disseminate what you want to your athletes. Mm -hmm. Or just even compare it against like, hey, what in this have we like totally not even trained at all that we might just want to include just to get you acclimated to so you could you could have some experience with it. And, and you could bounce ideas off him. And he's fun to work with. That That's kind of the cool thing. He's really fun to work with. Mm -hmm. I'm JR's he's manager. Good. So if anybody wants mm -hmm. to hire him, please JR contact me. Don't no, Patrick him. Clark's his manager. Not no more. Oh. Like Suge Knight, you just came in and just, just fucking got just him. Stiff on him. <laughs> nah, I, 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 I like me now. Talk on the swinging pull-up bar. That, I think that was really good and would be awesome. I just made that up about Patrick Clark, too. Sousa is actually his manager. <laughs> Or Jay I will find out when he watches this episode that I'm his manager. What did Andy, you say? What yeah. did you say about that swinging bar, Hiller? Um, I think that that would be one a great call if you found it and it happened this year, and two if it was implemented, be an incredible thing to see the athletes do. Yeah, I think that one's in. I think that's in. I, I mean, I I remember we had him in the wrestling room way back when, and I did a bar muscle up on one. I just smacked my face on it on the way down because it when you push away, it doesn't push away. Oh, <laughs> that was gnarly. Wow. Dude, a, everywhere. He, I don't even think he mentioned doing a bar. Hey, so that's the thing. You introduce that thing this year and you do pull-ups next year. You do chest to bar pull-ups the next year, 2027, you're doing bar muscle ups on it. You get three mm -hmm. years of. Yeah. Cause everyone would knock themselves out if they just threw in bar muscle ups this year. It, man. Did you figure out your camera debacle? No. I mean, I, I, that's why I'm so fucking tired right now because I was up so late last night fucking with cameras. I really like cameras. What do you like about them? They're just fun. 
I don't think I'm getting the good enough. I don't think I'm getting good enough audio. I want better audio is the problem. I don't think I'm getting loud enough audio. I better take some better headphones. Mm. What do you mean? What do I mean? What do I mean? Why, why don't you think you're getting good audio? You've done it all in the past. Wouldn't you just use the same setup? No, no, no. I've never done it with cameras this good before. I've never done the behind the scenes. But I, I have a shotgun mic on there, and then I put the DJI mic facing me on the other channel, and the DJI mic is so quiet compared to the shotgun mic. What the if you the 2018 games? What did you shoot that in? I just watched that. It looked great. Uh, I'm guessing I used – if I used a, a, a Sony – I don't know what I used. Shit, that's a good question. I, uh, that was the one. Maybe it was 17 I was watching. And even then, it was great. I was a hardcore Canon guy. And what if you just clipped the DJI to your collar? Uh, I don't think I would like that. Do you need good audio on you? No. Possibly. It, it, no. it, it helps, though. It helps, though. Yeah, but I thought the DJI mics were so great. Everyone talks about how great they are, and I'm just not getting I'm not it's getting. It's good that. when it's lapeled to you. Yeah, I'm thinking it's just too far away and like the angle. In in some video I saw someone had it clipped to their hat, dude. In yeah, the middle of their hat. hat. That was me. Hat. That was you? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like a Zach Tillander and uh Dylan Cooper thing. I see it in their Lyft Companion videos all the time. They like have you talked to me and stuff. Have you talked to Zach lately? T-Lander? Yesterday. How is he? He's gonna be there. He's at the games. I think what's he's he doing there? Reach out to you too. What, what's he doing there? Not wearing <laughs> double headphones. Is that, that's the John Young setup. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Hey, dude. Uh, he, I think he's just trying to grab some interviews. He said he was doing something with Craig, I believe. Richie. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They're the they're the megastar YouTubers in the space, dude. Megastar. But they don't even do stuff to highlight the athletes. All they do is reaction videos. Like Craig Ritchie stuff is just about watching him watch <laughs> athletes. It is that I, I hey, I just learned that term from Pedro. I didn't even what? know reaction. Like I've heard of reaction videos, but I thought reaction videos were like something like you just did on a reel, like some chick comes running, like you show someone like a really hot chick with a penis and then you show their reaction. It's a 20 second clip for Instagram. But Craig Ritchie stuff is like 30 minutes it's it's a 40 minute reaction video like him reacting to his new sauna him reacting to his wife's mm. body him reacting to ah. someone doing a snatch him like oh, cool. i didn't know that but that's how and i and i heard his agent um describe it as that that's what his his is a that's all genre but i thought it was for short content i didn't, i'm so crossfit do not hire me to be a media director i'm so out of the loop i'm such a dinosaur <laughs> Well, we'll just make reaction videos about with you, Sevan. Should we make a reaction video to his reactions? Oh, oh. Inception. What, what is your goal here? It's like, well, we're here to react to Craig's reactions, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Follow Craig around. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'll just hold the camera tight on you, Hiller, and anything you do, you just react. We get a nice, dude. Dude, I thought the behind the scenes were going to be awesome. You've been talking it up for five years now. What's going on? What is this crap? Well, you know, I thought I was out of the loop, so I tried to do a new angle and react to the react. It didn't work. You want to see something crazy? Sure. Yeah. Whip it out. Just just whips out his penis. I'm like Whip leaving it. the different way for this. We need a bottom corner now. That's what I need. Can't you just switch it to like one of these? Yeah. I'm about to. Does that work? Oh, yeah. Well, no, then it'll cover you. No, it looks like it's floating. Oh, yeah. I, no, put it back. I want the hat. Put it back. You, you want to wear the peptides no. crown? No. Look at that. I look like a superhero. <laughs> I have to go after this. After you show us? Yeah, you guys, I, I know this won't surprise wow. you, but this will surprise the listeners. So these... These are all the headphones I have just like lurking or in my office. And I've gotten rid of like 80% of my headphones. Okay. Okay. So these, this brand. Mm -hmm. Wireless. Okay. And, and yet he always gives you the ones that kind of shed on your ears. Mm -hmm. Your other mine. Studio. These Sony's. Okay. Sony's. Check. And the best one are the Apple plugins. Another one of these. Oh, but in white. Yeah. In white. These are for kids. Mm. I have okay. a green, green and white one. 
Oh. Hey, I, I need you to decipher Avi's message yesterday, by the way. He said you're <laughs> he said you're too buff to be good at filmmaking. Strong. There was a comment in there. I'm not sure who from, but I thought it was funny. He goes, low key, that was a dig at you, Sevan, considering you're the <laughs> only filmmaker he knows. That's a good point. That's a good point. I thought that was funny. comparison. Are we still on the headphones? Okay. Well, how many pairs is this now? Like eight, eight, seven. Seven? seven. Okay. Red and black. Okay. Number eight. Dude, what the hell? You only had two years. Oh, a zip. These ones got a case. Some bows or something. Mm, wow. Uh, this is a reaction video. I'm reacting to these. <laughs> it is a reaction video. Some old, some old ass beats. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow. <laughs> You're not oh, gonna... look, we just uh, the viewership just picked up by time. Keep going. <laughs> some other some other beats. Whoa. I have those pair. Damn, I really enjoy those. Oh, look, these same ones in blue. No, no, they're Ooh, different. Those ones are that's like three pair in one. It's 30 like the day 20, 2008, eh? Hey, just that's a it? headphones yeah. back. I have, I, have, I have some some Apple AirPods. Oh, in a leather case. You First know. time I ever met you, new mother Apple AirPods. You had oh. Happy. No less than six pairs of those sitting on your debt. You some, some other Apple AirPods. Mm. Coin purse case. Six. Some other Apple AirPods. Nice. There's four. Oh, those are old school. because well, you, you bring them all with you everywhere you go. I, yeah. This is why I don't believe you when you said you're only bringing two suitcases with. What are those? Oh, inside the. These box. are old school. These are wired. Damn. Here's just a fucking... So what are we at? Twelve. 14 now? 15, I don't know. Just a single air. No, I think I showed you at least 20 pairs of headphones. It's just, and this isn't, um, <laughs> there's no rules. <laughs> there's no rules. Yeah, it'll be a and I think that to be honest with you, I think in my office uh, elsewhere, I have another 20 pair. I need to fucking clean up in Damn. here. I need help. Dude, hoarder yeah. status. I am. I, uh, it is hoarder status. It is. It is. The kids are just stretching through knee high piles of headphones everywhere. And, Cords. People thought I was joking when it said like your studio looked like a Radio Shack. Did you see the video like... I put up yesterday, Sevan? Yeah, that one's cool. Did I like anything with me in it. <laughs> did, you, did you like the thumbnail? I thought the I... thumbnail was cool with you in the background, all kind of EDM'd out. No, I didn't see the thumbnail, but I, I, was, emba I, I was embarrassed at, at... How bad your quality is? Well, that no... <laughs> Thanks. No, no, um, he is. Shit. Hey, but you know what? I'll tell you the truth. It made me kind of. It made me um, miss Matt and Josh. Dude, that was a great pod. I, I listened to you know. what twenty eight hours of that podcast. Yeah, <laughs> to find those clips. No, I was looking for something else, but I found that, and I thought it would make a good video. Look at that. Oh, thumbnail. that's kind of cool about your genre of content. You could be looking for one thing and be, in, and then like you could make three videos at the same time if you put that much effort into it. You'll like this. Alexis is huge on raves, like EDM stuff. Yeah. And, and I'm not, but I went with her because she wanted someone to go with. So while we were there, I was listening to the music and I picked out a song and I go, you know, this would go really good with a bunch of the video I pulled with one of my clients the other day. And I turned it into an Instagram reel. And I, and I go, now it was worth it to go to this. Other than the fact that I work with Alexis, I kind of turned it into a, a, a purposeful work piece <laughs> and, now we can, and now we can write off the tickets to the festival <laughs> oh that's nice hey hiller oh, yesterday when yesterday um jr was uh playing some video footage from crossfit.com and it was adrian bosman talking and he was stopping it every seven seconds and i was like hey dude let it go every 14 seconds this is too crazy from the crossfit podcast where do you play it from he played it from like some crossfit YouTube station onto my YouTube station, but in 14 second chunks. There's nothing wrong with it so far. No complaints. It, it, mm. it, it, it's a case by case basis, that, and you're just playing with fire. I actually heard him say that. It's because he's kind of talking so loud where it probably chops up the background music. It's more Adrian than it is music. Mm. No, there wasn't, a, there, I don't remember any music, but I was just Very thinking, my, it is okay. I just remember thinking, fuck, this is like, is, is CrossFit really going to report me for this, for fucking four, using a 14-second clip of fucking Adrian? No. To promote, to promote the games? Hmm. Well, yes, they would. But, but <laughs> yeah. The first thing they would need to do is get the alert from YouTube, and that's yeah. the only thing you're trying to mitigate. You don't want them to send it over. And there's – like I pulled all that stuff from your Josh, Matt, and Zevon podcast, and you didn't get anything from that, did you? No, I wouldn't even know where to look. There you yeah. go. 
It's because you didn't. It, and there's just like certain things where it, you won't get anything. Hey, does the yeah. pausing work? Like when you let it play for seven seconds and we just pause it super briefly, then play it again? Because to me, I feel like we might want to talk or add some sort of filler to throw it off. No say? That's what. That's kind of what uh, he does with the pauses. Just talk over Adrian. Yeah. Uh, Alexis, uh, 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 um, when I think, <laughs> when I think of uh, 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 going somewhere with someone and they're on Molly, <laughs> what do you think? I, I mean, you think? Yeah, what, what I'm. You think? <laughs> I'm completely taking advantage of them. <laughs> uh, Barry McCockiner, uh, send Beaver his pod setup. Yeah. Get a little handsy. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whose traps are bigger, mine or Jake's? Wait, Jake. You-, you don't even have traps compared to him. Are you putting these headphones in the new L-shaped desk? Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully not. Where is that desk? It's in, it's in my entryway of my house. It's been there for a month, dude. Mm-hmm. I have an L-shaped desk. I have everything we need now. I have all. The, I have everything. Yeah, new computer. I just need someone you to come over. Are Are you not going to? Um, are either of you guys coming to? Um, I got a new computer too. Are either of you guys going to? Um, Newport. Newport Beach. Yeah. How'd you know? Because I was asked. Oh, are you coming? Yeah, you want to come, Susa? What? I don't know when it is. What What's going on? This is the it's- first I'm hearing of it. Oh, sorry. Uh, September. Uh, um, uh, Sarah told me to tell you, Sousa. It's my fault. Um, sure. It's trying to make me feel better. No, she actually did. <laughs> she told me to tell you and uh, yeah, she some, told me too. And to tell Hiller and someone else that I shouldn't say their name. Um, August twenty first. Yeah. To to September to September first. Correct. Um, Alexis is having her hip surgery the week after the games. It'll depend on what that all looks like. I'm pretty okay. focused on the games right now. Like if she recovers enough to get on a plane? <laughs> She's going to be all fucked up. I showed you the surgery, right? They got to like take a chunk out of her fucking hip. The bone, they cut it. They, <laughs> they cut yeah, it. Yeah, you showed me. It. It's a fucking nightmare, dude. Uh, enormous uh, enormous tits. Uh, you bought a new computer right before the games. You have like four days of downloading and sit-ups. No, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, plus I, I'll bring my, I won't bring that. I mean, I will bring that computer too. I'll bring two, two laptops to the, so that we can work extra hard, twice as hard. So we can work extra hard. What kind of, wait, you have a new computer and you're just letting it sit in your hallway with your desk. Waiting on my BPC 157 and T, TB 500. Yeah. Basically I got a, um, uh, I got a new laptop, juiced up laptop so that, if someone's in here with me, they can run the back end and I oh. got them a standing desk and then I got uh, the couch and the mi- new microphones. And the only thing missing is lights. And probably there's going to be some wires and nuances. I got all the carpets I ordered. I need to take everything out of here and clean the floor. I ordered shag carpet that fits in here wall to wall. <laughs> shag carpet. Yeah. He's going to change the audio. It's going to be sick. Oh yeah. my God. Shag carpet. Oh, oh. shit. It's my wife. Hi. Did you get lost? No, okay. I'm coming now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I love you. Bye. We're busy. Haley, we're busy. Fuck. That was, now you see how it's done. <laughs> you get lost? Motherfucker, you get lost? All right. Um, I Do we have a podcast tonight? Yes. Hey, Paige quick Powers. question. Are oh, Paige Powers. Up? I love her. Yep, 6.30. That's easy. Okay. What were you going to say, Hiller? Are you, are you trying to set the podcast studio up the way it was set up at HQ back? When you no, I'm going to set up the way, like basically the way Howard. St- I saw Howard Stern's studio. It's basically an L desk, so I can look at my computers, and then there's a couch there to my right or to my left, either way, and that that there's two two people can sit there with two fucking really nice mics in their face and headphones, and then a stand up desk or a desk somewhere else. So if Suz is here, he can run the show live from that uh, desk. We, and, and I got uh, three huge monitors for it and a new computer. It's so awesome. There was an angle in here where I got the idea of it. You showed me the Howard Stern one now. I, I remember you yeah. showing that. Mm-hmm. And I know you know what this looks like. Yeah. But when yeah, you and I'll have a big and I'll have a big TV like that that the people on the couch can stare at. Okay, there's mm-hmm. you. Yeah. In one of these podcasts, phrase that I listen, Fraser brings up the fact that you used to dress up for these things. Yeah. 
And he asked when you're going to start doing this again, wearing the sweater vests and cleaning up your facial hair. And you've done the facial hair part. Yeah. I can start wearing the, I can start wearing the vest again, but I'm trying to sell pedal t-shirts or else I would wear the vest. Uh, This one, there's the angle. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I kind of saw that head. Like there's, there's a kit beaver down to the bottom right with the headphones. Yeah. That's um, uh, Eric. uh, Yeah. That's cool. I need to take a picture of that. Yeah. I love the little, like school desk Sammy's in. She's just over on the side. <laughs> yeah. I, I did like this camera angle and I thought it was cool that you can see all the stuff you've got going in here. I asked Matt a crazy question there. I said, I said, Hey, you, you're gonna, all famous and shit and it's going to rain pussy on you. And yet you got, and yet you got a wife. Is that fucked up? And someone said this to me, this is what's the difference between me and other people. If you want to be like, Hey, that's a fucked up question to ask. I'm on board with you. But if you're saying that's a fucked up question to ask because Sammy's there, which is what people said, yeah. you're a fucking pussy <laughs> and a coward. And that's what separates me from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Like, I totally get it being like, hey, that you crossed the line, but not you cross the line because Sammy's there. It's like, dude, keep it real. Keep that shit real. <laughs> she knows. Don't, don't be a douche. Yeah, she knows. That's when the show is sponsored by Look She's not stupid. No one's with someone who's like, uh, I'm going to date this guy because no one else in the world is going to want to fuck him. That's my criteria. I picked my wife because I know no guy will ever want to fuck her uh, ever again, and so it's all safe. No, no one does that. Good point. You think everyone wants to fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your wife said, did you get lost? You got to go, Sevy. You got like one minute before she blows a lid. That's a good point. Okay, I love you guys. Uh, see you tonight with Paige Powers. Hiller, thanks for coming on, dude. Always love Thank seeing you. you. Me Susan, 